first item on the agenda will be the uh, Girl Scout proclamation. So if you guys could pass that back, I will read that. Give me two of them. So we're going to present. Do one of you want to go first? I will. You will? Okay. Felicia and. Oh, I got two Felicias. Kira was going to go first. So, just so I can read what we're presenting is uh, the Girl Scout Gold Award is the highest recognition that girls in grades 9 through 12 can earn in Girl Scouting. <laughs> Uh, the requirements culminate in the completion of a take action project that makes a measurable, sustainable difference in a girl's community. The process of building a take action project focuses on connecting a girl's personal interest with a community need. Steps involve leadership development, service to others, career exploration, and self improvement. And so, Kira, I'm going to read this uh, select board proclamation to you. Uh, whereas, Kira, uh, I'm going to get your name wrong, I'm sorry. Well, how do I pronounce it? Chokis. Chokis. Ch Chokis is a resident of the town of Hadley. And whereas, Kira Chokis has achieved the gold award as a member of Troop 40063, Hadley, Massachusetts, and the Girl Scouts of Western Massachusetts. And whereas, Kira Chokis created a cystic fibrosis community educational program and a wellness campaign for local cystic fibrosis <laughs> patients. And whereas Kira Chokas has completed this significant accomplishment, as earning the award requires many years of challenge and commitment to service, leadership, and career exploration, including creating a project which will benefit the greater community in a sustainable way. Whereas Kira Chokas has proudly served the Hadley community as a Girl Scout, acting as an example to youth, adult, and elder alike. Now, therefore, we, the select board of the town of Hadley, Massachusetts, on behalf of the inhabitants, do congratulate Kira Chokas on the occasion of her winning the gold award. We have no doubt that your achievement serves as an example to others, and we take great satisfaction that you are having such a successful and distinguished career. Congratulations, given this 12th day of June in the year 2019. So congratulations. Thank you. And um, so we have a copy here that you can take. Thank you very much. Uh, but one of our select board members is on vacation tonight, so full signed copy will be available. Here. For you. All right. <laughs> When Molly gets back and signs, okay, there'll be another. <laughs> great. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Do you want to tell us about yeah. your project? Okay. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> do I need to sit anywhere or stand? Or? You can do whatever you feel. Whatever you feel comfortable okay, doing. I'm going to sit. <laughs> hurt my ankle. Um, so my project is very near and dear to my heart. My aunt, um, Megan Hugwitz, who is also a resident of Hadley, passed away from cystic fibrosis back in 2014. And in honor of her, to honor her legacy, we create my aunt right here. She's the president of Megan's Light which honors her and her passion for fitness. It's a 5K, a family fun walk. And um, the past year, we were granted a, a grant called 65 Wellness Wishes. And these grants were given out to patients who had cystic fibrosis, who didn't have the means to afford any wellness things. So some of the grants that were given out were treadmills, um, taekwondo lessons, horse lessons, and they were given to all ages, all gender, all races. It was given to everyone. And um, we didn't have a brochure to promote this um, grant, so I made one, and the board of Megan's Light and our um, marketer put it out in um, Boston Children's <coughs> Hospital so people would know if they were eligible or not for this award. And um, to educate the local children and community, I did um, some mini boot camps, which with the kids I did like mini 
jumping jacks and bear crawls, like some simple push-ups, like things like that, um, in the beginning of their sports practices. And then I talked to them and told them about cystic fibrosis and how different it would have been if they had this disease, because <coughs> cystic fibrosis affects the respiratory system and it makes it harder to breathe over time. And I also created um, some mini stress balls that had the words um, just breathe and Megan's life on them. And I don't know if any of you guys watched The Bachelor or Bachelorette, but um, you want it. <laughs> no, <I'm not>. uh, <laughs> it's over there. <laughs> but um, one of the guys who was on it, um, Sean Booth, we got him to come and do a boot camp with whoever wanted to join. So, oh, wow. That was my project. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, congratulations. Okay, and then we have our. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We have our second proclamation <coughs> to Felicia Phil. Uh, whereas Felicia Phil is a resident of the town of Hadley, and whereas Felicia Phil has achieved the gold award as a member of Troop 40033, Hadley, Massachusetts, and the Girl Scouts of Western Massachusetts, and whereas Felicia Phil created the project Socializing with Senior Project and the Senior Citizens Senior Prom, and whereas Felicia Phil has completed the significant accomplishments as earning the award requires many years of challenge and commitment to service, leadership, and career exploration, including creating a project which will benefit the greater community in a sustainable way. Whereas Felicia Phil has proudly served the Hadley community as a Girl Scout, acting as an example <coughs> to youth, adult, and elder alike. Now, therefore, we, the select board of the town of Hadley, Massachusetts, on behalf of the inhabitants, do congratulate Felicia Phil on the occasion of winning the Gold Award. We have no doubt that your achievements serve an example to others, and we take great satisfaction that you are having such a successful and distinguished career. Congratulations, given this 12th day of June in the year 2019. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh, uh, correct. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Where would you like to tell us about yeah. your project? Okay, so yeah, you, you said a little bit. Stand up next to Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know if she's trying to get a picture. <laughs> Um, so I did socializing with seniors and I knew that for my gold award I wanted to work with seniors because for my silver I worked with children so I wanted to hit both ends of the spectrum and so I saw the problem in my church of less youth being involved and also um, I wanted to do something for the seniors so I created uh, monthly bingo nights at my church that was like a night of family fun for people to come out and socialize and all generations came out and then I also went to the Arbor's Assisted Living in Amherst and did bingo and like a tea party there once a month with them for people who couldn't get out and um, weren't as like accessible. And then I also, the bingo nights helped to fundraise um, the prom, the senior prom for senior citizens. So ages 60 and over came out and I did uh, a prom which 110 senior citizens attended and I did a, um, got a DJ to play oldies music and I had a photo booth <laughs> and a sit-down meal. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. And then for the sustainability piece, I had some money that I put in a fund at the church in order to continue these social events um, to keep it lasting. Yeah. You want us all to stand in front yes, of there? Would that be great? Thank you. <laughs> Are we getting in the middle? Oh, yeah. the what do you guys want to? <laughs> okay. Come on, you next to Joyce. <laughs> awesome. Beautiful. Okay, me first. Thank you right here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Three, two, one. Oh. Joyce. <laughs> All right. Joyce. Yes, dear. <laughs> Be the best one. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, guys. Thank Congratulations. Thank you. I just want to add a little something to it too. I think um, that we haven't had the opportunity.
opportunity. I was a Girl Scout. We didn't have gold and silver awards back in my day. As far as I got was Mariners, so that was quite a long time ago. Um, and I think you certainly have set an example for other girls in town that you can certainly strive to do more. And I can only see both of you doing great things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Since Jean's not here, we always need volunteers in the Girl Scouts. Yeah. So nice to come back and volunteer. Okay, I never know where it's going to break. Right? Yeah, I'll just add a little bit more to uh, Joyce's comment. So when you turn 18, don't forget to keep up your volunteering and we'll run for public office. <laughs> After college, you got to get your parents yeah. first. On behalf of the Girl Scouts of Central and Western Massachusetts, I'd like to just say thank you very much for taking the opportunity to recognize that. It's very meaningful. We yeah. appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, we definitely. appreciate our young in town. They're our future. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for Absolutely. stepping up and serving your community. That's a great example. Absolutely. We're going to go support local right now. Okay. <laughs> okay yes. Does that be one? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Jane, did you go to the senior prom? No. He ditched his girlfriend on senior night. The people who did oh. have the senior prom. They had a great time. Right? They're still talking about it. Oh, wow. Okay. Chief Mason walks in the room and everyone leaves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you know. I wish it would happen more often. <laughs> okay, so now we can uh, begin our consent agenda. We have on our consent agenda uh, minutes from February 13th, 2019 and February 27th, 2019. We have warrants AP1946, AP1947, AP1948, AP1948S, AP1949, AP1949B, PR1946, and PR1947. We have surplus equipment valued less than $500, a request to destroy slash discard computer equipment, surplus property, disposal of town hall computers and printers. We have a police department appointment, full-time officer Casey Gilbert. Chief, do we want to take that, do we want to take that out of the consent agenda? Just have a few things to okay. say and then we'll you can we'll, we'll take that out for now and then get to that right after. Uh, we have Hadley Historical Commission appointment, Stacy Cooney. Cemetery Committee resignation, Merle Buckout. Mount Holyoke Range Advisory Committee resignation, Merle Buckout. A one day liquor license for the town of Amherst, July 4th, 2019, Sun Wheel on Rocky Hill Road, and a Cemetery Committee appointment of Mary Thayer. Can I have a motion? Uh, second. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And Chief, would you like to say a few words regarding uh, Officer Gilbert? She made it back. She made it back. <laughs> Great. She pulled in the parking lot pretty quick. But. <laughs> um, so uh, you probably recognize Casey seated in front of you. You appointed her <clears throat> as a special officer about a year and a half ago. Uh, she's been with us the, uh, the entire time. Uh, Casey works uh, full-time in uh, medical administration uh, for the United States Air Force, which is where she was uh, at a training exercise right before she, she came here. Um, I told her last week, 7 o'clock, so she thought she had plenty of time, and then I realized the change the starts of the meeting to 6.30. Uh, she's a unit deployment manager who supervises over 100 people uh, in the job that she does right now. Uh, previous to working for Hadley, she also worked as a volunteer for Grandview PD, so she came to us with a little bit of experience as far as patrols and how uh, some of the ins and outs of police work. Uh, but she has spent uh, the lion's share of the last year and a half working any and all uh, shifts for us. 
She has not hesitated to work holidays, uh, nights, or double shifts. She's there quite often. And she was the top candidate for this most recent selection process. She is, um, the position that she is being recommended for tonight is a vacancy that we have had since Officer Goulding left to go to Holyoke Police. Uh, she has already actually qualified, has all the qualifications for a waiver. Um, so she can actually begin uh, working as early as next week, this, this coming pay period after uh, you folks just make your decision. Um, so with all those things being said, I would recommend uh, Officer Casey Gilbert to be the next uh, full-time police officer in the town of Hadley. I'll make that motion to accept Casey as our next full-time police officer. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're Great. working on We're working hard on that right now. Okay. A lot of, a lot of logistical okay. issues to work out. For sure. Uh, surplus equipment. Mm -hmm. That's safe, but still sitting mm -hmm. in the, uh, the higher department. Oh, yeah. Are you going to try to push that up again or sell it again? Oh, uh, that's uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I no, no, I don't want to get in any trouble for it. I, I'll make you a reasonable offer for it. Okay. Yeah, you will accept the in writing, or what do you, how, how would that work, David? Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll do a posting. Let me make a note so I remember. And are you set up for next meeting or something? Yeah. Or whatever you want to do. Next week. Sure. And I'll make an offer of $100 for it. Don't, so tip, your, don't tip your hand. <laughs> don't give all your cards away. <laughs> <laughs> Got to put all those gold bars in there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything else there? No. Good. That's it. Okay. That's it. okay. All right. Uh, is anyone here for public comment this evening? No. Okay. Cultural council. Uh, yeah. Well, so we'll move on to the cultural council, and um, I believe there is a request or proposal to develop a Hadley Poet Laureate Award. So, well, Dina, okay. would you like to? Yeah, hi. Um, I'm Dina, and John Rollinson may be walking in at any Oh, do you but want us to wait until he gets no, here? No, I don't. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. I need to go. But yeah. um, I thought he was here. I told him 640. I said I'd be here at 640. So. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, so it's not really an award. I'm on the Cultural Council, and um, we have. Um, part of the Cultural Council, as I think you know, um, we get funds from the state and we give them to various um, groups who are benefiting the town in some way, either through, you know, usually through performances that benefit the residents of the town. And among the funds that we get, there's always a little bit of funds left over that the Cultural Council can kind of decide what we want to do with them in terms of just trying to promote the arts further. And um, which it was John's idea, so I was hoping he would be here. <laughs> he kind of wrote me into it. Um, many towns have a poet or literary laureate. Usually the towns that have these are a little bigger than Hadley, but there's really no reason that our town couldn't have someone in that position. It's, I wouldn't call it necessarily an award, although it is a designation, and it certainly would help whoever it was that was um, put into that position. Our thought for um, Hadley, which is slightly different from how they do it in other towns, is sometimes um, town, the, arts, the cultural council gets together with other people and they say, this person, we want to appoint them. Uh, but we'd really like to see it as more of an open process because we really like to honor uh, people in the town who are involved in literature in some way. And also, uh, we want to kind of see who might have the most useful um, ideas for benefiting the town. So we'd certainly see that there would be some level of accomplishment publication as part of that, um, but we wouldn't necessarily have it as you know an award. Um, often towns um, 
not towns, but often the poet laureate in various positions gets a stipend because they are expected to do a number of community events, community projects, and part of the nomination <coughs> process would be asking people what they would think about doing and trying to get something that might be the best fit for um, this particular town. Um, but we would not want, we're not asking the town to give any money. The Arts Council has a little bit of discretionary money, and we were thinking of underwriting anything else we come up with with local businesses. So this is something that we wouldn't, um, basically the reason we're here at the, at the select board is not that you necessarily need to approve it or disapprove it, but if we're going to go forward, we need to know that this is something that the town is excited about, uh, would be participating in, because for example, we could see the Poet Laureate maybe heading off town meeting by reading something very short, short poem or something, or you know, being at the Memorial Day Parade, being at the Asparagus Festival. We'd like to see whoever this person is integrated into some of the events at the town. So for us to just go ahead and do it without both knowledge and um, you know support from various town bodies wouldn't make a lot of sense. So that's why I'm basically here today is to just get a sense of you know whether people think it's a good idea. Other people in the town can participate or not participate as they see fit, if somebody's you know from the select board or wherever says, oh, I really want to have a different town resident who's not in the cultural council part of the process, that's totally fine. If they want to just designate that to the cultural council, that's also fine. But we just kind of wanted to you know get a sense of what you thought about it, whether you you know thought this might be something that would benefit the town. And and I see, um, for example, in other towns, just to give you, then I'll shut up. I promise. <laughs> um, other towns, they've done, um, poet laureates have done things like organize readings, workshops. Um, one poet laureate put books of poem, did a poetry book drive and put poems in doctor's offices and things like that. So there's something else to read. Um, got involved with, you know, kid programs, school programs. So um, it would be something that the person, I would hope, you know, whoever we would want to <coughs> integrate into a lot of town things. So without, the support and you know go ahead from the town it wouldn't make a lot of sense so that's basically I could see okay. this being worthwhile probably maybe at, at the senior center providing workshops mm -hmm. or something along those lines um, I like the idea of schools I think our, our children don't do enough writing and um, presentations and doing those kinds of things lately I think that would be a great opportunity for them to do something like that um, so I, I, I certainly see a need for it. I, I think it's a good idea, but I think it, it looks like it's more in line with the library the, rather than a select board right now at this point. I think it's just us giving our stamp yeah. of approval. Yeah. And I think it's us too. I mean, I, I'm for yeah, this idea. I like I like this idea of a person to kick off certain events with a poem and then reflection. I think that's a great part of what we could offer the town. And yeah, I, I think it's appropriate in the cultural council and a good place to start and that person could participate in multiple departments potentially I mean it depends again what they're willing to commit their time to so yeah it is I, a volunteer position yeah. so yeah. it's you know so it's not like they're going to be full-time at people's disposal but we hope they yeah. do like three or four you know significant yeah yeah but even if a couple of appearances. like you're saying have some things on the library that they recommend exactly. for people to check out mm -hmm. you know when we're doing groundbreaking ceremonies having somebody or different things I think that's a great yeah. use of that having that <coughs> reflection I don't know so what do you want to do with it? I mean do we want to take any kind of formal vote um, I mean it's, we're not at we're more or less expressing mm -hmm. support or not support at this point um, uh, I can make a motion that we uh, express the select board support for the, uh, this program, uh, the establishment mm -hmm. of, or uh, the appointment of a volunteer to head up this program. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that also, but certainly if there's any money involved in it, I think we should be yeah. informed. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. A library would, would Well, we're not asking, we would not be asking the town for any money. We and might be using some of the cultural council funds. Mm -hmm. And any other money would be privately raised. I, yeah. I can guarantee that. And I you know, believe not, there are we're ways. We're not putting it in the budget or anything like that. So. Our, I know other organizations within the town have funded positions 
through outside money. Is that something that could be done here? Or I just know with stipends, they can cause mm -hmm. issues with the okay. town yeah. um, because of health insurance and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. That's one reason why we're, we don't have them at anymore. Like, you know, $500 yeah. a year or something, you know, some very small token amount, you know, just as a. Yeah, I guess uh, I, I was posing that question to David to see if that, that's possible in the town or not. I yeah, know. I'm just trying to think through it right now because you're talking about money that the state gives to the cultural council. The cultural council gives this out in the form of grants mm -hmm. and support. Um, and what you're talking about is you're giving out a, a, a small grant in support of the activities of the performance artist, mm -hmm. basically. So I, I don't see any real problem there. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah so that's a possibility. So. so was there a second? I did. You did, okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for coming. And if John comes, you can tell him to come. Yeah, we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that's what I was going to go into is preparations for the standard and poor's then bond we, rating we review. Some time we have, um, Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. Vanners, is it? Uh, I'm, that's my part. My name is Patrick Cohen. Okay, that's right. You're from Heirloom Collective? I am, yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Do we want to do that real quick? No. Where's that? Uh, adult use marijuana RFQ results? Is that? Mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, select. So the select board will review the results of the statements of qualifications received in response to the town's RFQ for qualified businesses to apply for the two towns available adult use marijuana retail licenses. Uh, one vendor responded to the RFQ and that vendor meets the minimum requirements established by the town. Uh, permission <laughs> is requested to issue another RFQ as there has been some interest expressed by at least two additional vendors. So. Uh, right now, we are just going to review this RFQ. And David, do you have anything to kick that off? That review? Yeah, so we received one response. Thank you very much. There are multiple copies in here in case anybody wants to have a copy. Uh, I went through the, um, the, the proposal and I evaluated it based upon the six criteria that we had listed. Um, uh, heirloom Collective me certainly meets the, the requirements of the town, so my recommendation is, is that we enter into negotiations over the host community agreement and any other process that we need to achieve in order to award, ultimately when you're certified, the, uh, the license held by the town of Hadley. Great. Just, did I leave out a step? This is all new to us. Um, no, it's not, it's two to us too, so that's not about right. We need there's, there's two steps to uh, at the town level, which is as you mentioned the community host agreement, and then having a uh, community meeting. Mm -hmm. um, that any we'll publicize it. Any member will find a a mutually agreed upon forum, and any member of the community can come and ask us questions um, for any period of time. Any subject matter that they want to talk about, well. Uh, we can talk about. And then once we accomplish those two tasks, then we take the whole package and submit it to the state for a, uh, um, to go through the state's mm -hmm. process. And are you already starting the um, medical establ retail establishments in Hadley? Yes. So this would be in addition to that, so to speak, or like a lot of them, you know, start with medical and then go to adult use right. so at that location? We've um, been, been working with the board, a couple new faces since we, we came to town, mm -hmm. um, but for over three years, I guess, uh, the process is just, it's grueling. I was just going to say, though, how long has the process been so far? It's been three years? It's four, for us, it's four years, uh, this month, four years we've been doing it. So it's, it's pretty grueling. Um, we're four years in, we, have, we haven't had one dollar in revenue yet. Mm -hmm. I do, but we do have a, a grow facility up at Bernstein, and open invitation to anybody that wants to come and walk through it. It's, it's you know, not my words. Plenty of uh, folks have been through there and give us many accolades on the quality. Actually, David, you had an opportunity. To I did, and I took, your, took that opportunity. I was <laughs> impressed by the sophistication of the uh, the facility. So thank you. Yeah. So we have that up and, and running. Uh, Hadley 
uh, we, you know, as, as a lot of folks know, we have our uh, medical host agreement with, with you folks. Um, we're going to go into the final stage of the um, medical licensing process with the state any day now. And so hopefully the expectation is we're open for medical sometime this summer. It sort of goes into a, a bit of a black box and then we're at the mercy of the speed of the state um, to go through that final step. Uh, and in parallel, we'd like to also um, carry on with the recreational process with the town um, because of the length of time it takes to actually get through uh, with the state. So I, may, I recommend that we enter into negotiations for the uh, post, the post agreement with the okay. Collective. Um, but I don't know if you want to put together a negotiating team, which is what we did last time. So I'll make a motion <coughs> that we award um, the heirloom. heirloom Collective this um, adult use recreational license pending a su successful commu host community agreement negotiation. Um, but as far as the second license goes, um, I think I'd like to put that on hold for re-releasing re the RFP until I'm looking at the dates in the calendar, something like December 16th. And the reason for that is uh, twofold. One is um, to give us a chance to work out the agreement with the Heirloom Co Collective and to see that we can work this out in a way that's beneficial for the town. And um, also, the other organizations that may have been expressing interest, they could have responded to this RFP if they had enough interest. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why I'd say let's uh, let's hold off and see how this goes and see if we can pull this together in a way that benefits everybody. Let's get one in process before yep. we award the second one. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then maybe we can release it mid-December for a uh, bid opening sometime in January and then restart the process of negotiations at that time with, uh, with, uh, with the next one. But do we want to just break that up into two just to keep it clean? Um, uh, two motions? Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Know. Okay. So I, I mean, we can do it the other way too. I no, just no, was okay. thinking. So uh, I'll, I'll amend that. We'll make a yeah. motion that we uh, issue this um, adult recreational <coughs> use license to heirloom <coughs> to the heirloom collective, uh, contingent upon successful host community agreement negotiations. Yeah. For now. Okay. Right. Is it adult use marijuana or is it the medical marijuana? Adult. Adult, adult use. Adult adult use. Yeah. We're already we already done the medical. We're all done with the medical. They're just waiting for the, the state, the state. now. The medical. Okay, so this is just what you need. Or don't use. Yes. Don't yeah. Use. Okay. Can I have a second? John did. He did. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Well, okay. Uh, first any further discussion? Yeah. I don't. I'm not used to hearing it from you, John. So. Can I? Your hand usually cutting in. I know. Yeah. Got a break tonight. I know. Any further discussion? Nice and quiet here on this side. I just want to say I'm not in favor of marijuana, but uh, I see uh, this as a we have to do something because of two licenses and things like that. And then you have been patient with us waiting four years. Um, so, I mean, it's the, the nature of the beast here of uh, everybody wanting to jump on board with this. So that's my okay. comment. Uh, I just have a question for you. You have the Grove facility in Bernardston, but then do you have locations in other towns? Are there other towns you have host community agreements with? I'm not host community agreements with, no. And are you working on any in other towns, or is Hadley your only town that you're doing any kind of sales in? Um, so, right, Hadley or, would be our first one. We yeah. have a community host agreement with Bernardston. Okay. Um, both on the medical side and on the recreational side. Okay. And we have the medical one here in Hadley. Mm -hmm. So this will be our first dispensary location. We do have a location in Greenfield that we may or may not pursue. It's sort of up in the air, we have a lot of things we're okay. trying to get under control right now. Yeah. And then potentially a third one in Orange. Okay. So we're looking at other other sites, but um, we're getting our arms wrapped around what we have right now. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, and so then your second motion. <laughs> we'll make the second motion that we uh, hold off on reissuing the RF, RFQ until mid December. Uh, for the second allocated adult use license. I'll second that. 
Okay, any other discussion on that? Yeah, I think that'll give us time. Hopefully everything will be approved and we'll see how the first one's working out at that point. And we can move, move ahead or behind from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Approved. So, so, yeah. And, and, uh, and uh, I didn't know what was in the spot. <laughs> Donuts? What's going on? <laughs> um, do, do we want to form a committee to uh, negotiate or want to talk about that at a future meeting? Well, I think we ought to get going on this. So what's what's involved, David? Uh, what's involved so far as I know is that uh, we sit down and talk about the uh, payments to the town, the other issues that may arise in terms of public safety and impact upon the town. And um, we, uh, we talk about the remediation and uh, and w any other kinds of agreement that we want to put into the host community agreement. So, how much police time are we talking about? How much in terms of uh, infrastructure do we need to build, which I don't think we do? Um, any other kinds of impacts upon the community? Uh, there's also a component for uh, charitable <coughs> donation. Um, and uh, then there's the a uh, difficult issue of figuring out um, the um, way to measure the upper caps of the amount of money that uh, we can ask of heirloom collective the way the state law is written is that we can't uh, ask for anything more than than what the town requires and there's a I think no more than three percent of gross sales in any case so a little shaky on the details so correct me if I'm Right, so, uh, so that's the conversation and the parameters in which it occurs. <coughs> well, should we say if anyone is interested in joining the committee to negotiate this agreement, we would would look for people to apply for that, or no, is this something no, more independent that we want to be? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Is this nice to want to include everybody. Yes. Yeah. 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 I like to include everybody. <laughs> Um, so yeah, perhaps we can think about it and that the next meeting form a committee when yeah. Molly's back. I don't know if she'd be interested in this or not. Next week, so yeah. yeah. So let's talk and about it next week. And you have a heads up that I'm sure you're going to wait for your decision within the next day or so from the state, correct? Um, so the the on the medical side, it, it will be a while. So we submit a form that says we're ready for a final inspection mm -hmm. on our medical certificate mm -hmm. when they get to us, they get to us. So that could be, hopefully it's only a month. So early, mid, July, um, optimistically, we could be open for, for medical. On the, on the rec side, we have to get through these two steps of the town, the host agreement and the community meeting before we can file the full application with the same. So the sooner we can um, accomplish these uh, two important tasks at the town level, the faster we can get our application to the state, the faster we can get open for rec, the faster we can start making payments to the town. So yeah, I think by next week we should have no problem getting it appointed and, and, and working toward it. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Great. Great. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah, thank you. As always, David's got all of our phone numbers. Call us with any other thoughts or concerns or questions you might have or we're an open book. Full transparency. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now we will go for preparations for SMP bond rating review. I know Linda and David have been tirelessly working on this. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah. Well, let's go through uh, abatements. Sure. Sewer abatement. Fourteen High Meadow Street is requesting a sewer abatement due to a burst pipe in the basement. Um, Mr. Okafor, would you like to present that at all tonight, or? Yeah. Were you here to, to, to present those abatements? Um, yes, Mr. Chairman. Oh, okay. I sent uh, a recommendation to the chairman. I don't know if the board got my... Yes, yes. we did, yes. So we, um, um. We, we investigated the issue, and also with our past practice, we had to come up with a consensus. So we took, we took uh, three to four readings 
uh, pass through it and average it out to be able to assess what might have gone through without going through the sewer system. Mm -hmm. And that's how we came up with the, the, the number that we're recommending that the board should have it. Okay, so this is the uh, original bill was $308.46 yes. and your uh, recommendation is that the select board abate it to $146.95? Yes. Okay. So moved. I'll second that and this is for the sewer abatement only at this point. Right? Sewer abatement correct. only, correct. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, I'm going to oh, Okay, thank you. Um, and then our second water abatement is 12 Meadow Street. Um, the property owner is requesting a water abatement from a frozen pipe bursting over the winter. Uh, and I have the DPW does not recommend this abatement. Yes. Do you have anything further to say? No, 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 no. We, 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 do, we recommend that the board do not approve any abatement. I make a motion not to approve the abatement for the uh, water. Second. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 You checked it out and none of that water went into the sewer? No. So we have those. Um, uh, we have three minutes officially. Uh, how about a fiscal year 2020 capital improvement plan? Um, what we have here is to ask issue notices to departments to update the 10 year capital improvement plan with a deadline for submission of August 7th. So basically, we are just looking to send this out to all the departments and request that they update their capital improvement plan for this year for the next 10 years. <coughs> it's due August 7th, and then the capital committee will commence reviewing it and bring that to the select board. So do you need a motion on that? So we need a motion to release this to the departments in so town. Moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And are you gonna uh, like the water and sewer have their updates through engineering firms? Or are they going to be able to update those? I know like the sewer one's two thousand and eight, it's very eleven years old. You know? The capital improvement plan? Yeah. Um no, I think that's entirely up to the DPW director, director yeah. to uh, decide which of these studies we want to uh, upgrade. Is. Yeah, and that will be part of this process. Yeah. So, but your recommendation is to update those, to look at yeah. possibly updating those plans. I know I've a couple times. Okay. I don't know when the water one. When was the water one updated last? The water. The water is the same. Almost the same time. The water. The water and the sewer. Um, actually, I have not read detail of the last update, but I, I'm already working on the new update. Um, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we Jimmy, can yeah. we can table this until we know more about it. But raise the flag at this point yeah. and say, can we look at updating those and and uh, go from there? So yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and I guess we can start the poll hearing. It's seven fifteen right now. Okay, just turn. So <laughs> on my official clock here on my computer. So. <laughs> Uh, so we have a Verizon pull hearing, East Hadley Road. Is someone here for that? No, You're here. Okay, good. I was yes, hoping. <laughs> All right. Uh, so can you, what would you like to do? I'll just give you a brief uh, description of what is being proposed here tonight. Um, there are two poles, uh, T105 and a half E3 and T106 and a half E5. Um, being proposed on this petition plan um, to be set by Verizon. And the reason for the petition, there are three reasons for this uh, particular petition. The spans currently are quite long. They're close to 300 feet. Um, typically a standard span is about 150 or, yeah, about 150. Um, so the spans are quite long. Uh, the petition was um, originated by Eversource requesting new poles because they want to do a system upgrade uh, in that area. So the third reason, the Verizon uh, line foreman went out and looked at these 
particular locations and the cables are literally low enough to the ground for me to stand in and reach up and grab them. They're almost about touching the bob wire. Yeah, exactly. So you, you, you know what's going on. <laughs> so anyways, those are the three reasons for the, for the petition of the new poles. They're, they're, uh, they're on the West Farm property where it crosses yep. over to Cooks. Yep, yep. And they've been hanging the globe for 20 years now. Hmm. So moved. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You got it. All right. Do we need to sign anything for him yeah. tonight? Is that right here? Uh, yeah, you would sign and do whatever you got to do. I wouldn't yeah, take it. It's, it's not right now. Okay, send it back right. to Verizon. Right. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know if he would give you something tonight. So. No, nope. okay. I'm all set. Perfect. Okay. All right. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay. Um, how about now for the, do we have enough time for S&P review? Well, Rating review? 15 yeah. minutes or so? Too good. Okay. So I know on this S&P, like I was saying, Linda and David have been working tirelessly on getting us an improved rating in S&P and hopefully help save taxpayers some money with this improved rating. So um, I know you guys have had done a lot of work on various different plans and handbooks and procedures. Um, so I don't know if you want to run through anything particular that you'd like us to approve or take note of tonight. Yeah, I, you've been given a a lot of, of paperwork. Yeah. And, and this is so that the timeline of it, just so you know where we stand, the, the, re, the bond rating review is next week. You do have one more meeting between now and then, so mm -hmm. if you want to read all of these and have any questions, you know, that would be fine. Also, if we had a, a, an approval, I know that certainly it would be ideal for us to have the approval and just move on, but um, that's, uh, that's up, up to you. But, um, you know, we, there's a lot of basic paperwork that we have worked through. Dave has done most of this. We worked together on the capital plan and um, then we realized we really needed to get through into the administrative and financial policies manual review. Um, I know that it had been a while and some a lot of so a lot of those revisions are just updates for our procedures, what's what we've been doing, updates because of laws that have changed in the meantime. And uh, so then there's the simple updates such as going from weekly payroll is now bi-weekly payroll. Uh, some things will change in, in the collector's office. So this is the way we've approached this is we changed what we needed to change and we're, we're um, if you look at the heading for each section, if you read through it, I put, I put notation, I put notes saying, just procedural changes in this one or no substantive changes or we're gonna look at this again in the fall. So at this point, rather than um, you know tidy it up and put it back on the shelf till next time, we're going to see this as a an ongoing um, uh, tool for for us and for the town. The idea of having procedures is that that we're looking at them, we're we're using them, that department heads are able to use them, and that we're not forgetting what's in there. And we're just hoping that we can um, with. You know, hoping that some of our changes with bringing in the HR and, and uh, changes in, in personnel and some of the, like going to bi-weekly payroll, we're, we're trying to introduce so many, as many of those things as possible, mainly to ease up our time so that we can spend more time on this level of things. Because I know as I do get into it, it's, I, I think they're, they're even more important than, it, it's not just a matter of getting these updated because we have to review. These are important and we do need to spend more time on our so. so we're borrowing, what is it, $8 million? We are borrowing, eight, yeah, about $8.5 million this first round in, uh, in July. Um, uh, a lot of this is being rolled over from BAN's short-term borrowing that we've already done. And um, there is some new money in that, but the, there's, it's, it's no big, you know, people shouldn't be worried that suddenly we're going to buy $8 million and your taxes are going to skyrocket. That's not the way our planning has happened. We have eased up into it. We raised the rates to cover um, payment off of our old debt and to cover the short-term borrowing that we did in the meantime. So we're, the, we're easing this in gradually, even though that's a lot to be borrowing at once. So this is the first bond we've done. The bans are the short-term uh, notes that we've done in anticipation of the bond. And now we're jumping to that higher level of getting a tax exempt bond and going through all the hoops. And I've actually never been through this before. I know David's been through this and Molly has been through it. She's gonna be on our team meeting with Standard & Poor next week. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so we're borrowing for buildings, uh, the Univents, the library, the senior center, um, the uh, fire substation. There's a number of capital equipment uh, items that are in there. So, and we're only borrowing enough in order to maintain cash flow for uh, the, the, the budget. So we're not borrowing the whole shebang. Uh, so we will be back doing this again. Six in, months. In time? a year and a half. No, a year from January. Year and a half. Right. Good. We will be borrowing the rest of it because no, there's nothing for the library in this one, and we won't need the library for a while because they're going so far with the grant, and this isn't even all of the senior center or the uh, fire substation. Mm -hmm. But it's a good chunk of it, and it will get us through. And we'll probably have to do some short-term borrowing um, for the next phase of it uh, because we don't know how quickly it'll move along. But it, during 1920. <laughs> 2020. <laughs> 2020, we will be doing uh, getting that next phase and wrapping the final amounts into a bond in January 21. Um, so, yeah, and the bonds are really mostly about the buildings and the, the long term. We're, we're hoping that we can keep the, the, the smaller items we call smaller uh, police, police cars on and, and on the DPW equipment. We're hoping that we can keep those in the shorter term bands and just get them borrowed and paid off within uh, a certain number of years so that would allow us to keep the interest rate lower on them and not be such a big deal but the borrowing for the buildings is a big deal we can't pay them off within 10 years and so we do have to go into the larger level of borrowing which are the bonds and which will be over over 20 over 25 years mm -hmm. um, in order to keep the tax rate and the importance of this SMP review, uh, Standard & Poor's, is, to, um, is for our bond rating. Right, our, And so that's for borrowing, and that bond rating affects our interest rates. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if it affects other things besides interest rates, but that's the primary uh, so thing, correct? Yeah, bond, bond insurance. Bond if insurance. You, if you have a high yeah. enough credit rating, you don't need to buy bond insurance. That's a $5,000 savings right off the bat. Okay. So I know S&P is kind of, you know, it's, it's obviously their discretion what they rate us at based on their criteria, they do but criteria. Is, um, is your feeling or David Eisenthal's uh, feeling that we're a good candidate for a better rating this time around, or do we have any challenges? It's, it, or is, what? it is a challenge to get from AA plus, which is where we are, to the AAA, and there's right. very few of them, although he is aware of them, and he said, you know, he certainly is uh, doing everything that we can, and we are too. Management is a lot of it, which is, um, and, and certainly our yes. geographical area and who we are as a town is a lot of it. So that's why we're trying to, you know, get our management practices under control. As to whether, um, I'd say it's an outside shot at this point. He says if he sees an opportunity, we're going through it. Um, he's he's going to do his best. David Eisenthal is, is experienced at this, and if we have a chance to get through that, we will. And if and if there's, um, you know, we certainly want to stay where we are, the, right. the very least. And um, if we don't get an, uh, and if we don't get upgraded this time, uh, we will uh, we will see what the reasons are, and if there's an opportunity for us to make some changes so that we could improve even more next time, we will. There are some things we can't change about. The, the town that we are, yeah. and uh, and we will be um, judged on the same basis of other time, towns of this size. But it, we have a very good bond rating right now. But we want to just make sure he's, that he's all of this. these years, and I've known him for years. He, yeah. has, he has just done an outstanding job for us. Um, so I'm sure that he will work to do what he can for right. him, yeah. to get us there. And I don't think we would be going through this level of effort if there wasn't a chance this out the there that we could improve. That I've seen. Yeah. For a while, but for those Without watching at home, changing. the the double A plus we have now is excellent. It's very good. It yeah. is yeah. excellent. So yeah. that's our goal: to at least hold on to that, maybe yes. do better. So. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Please. Yeah. 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 Yes, and please. and we're like, from what I've seen, I mean, we're right on that cusp, you know, based on the numbers and those kind of things. So we just don't know for sure. So, yeah. but I'll make a motion to move forward. I think it's important to get this rolling. Um, okay. Okay, so just to help us uh, with Give that motion, motion. Um, Go ahead. Um, we're asking, we're, we've presented to you a number of uh, documents that we're going to give to the, the credit rating agency, um, but there are some new ones and updates to an existing one. So mm -hmm. the new one is the Appointed Volunteers Handbook, mm -hmm. 
Uh, this is uh, designed to reduce liability by committees not <coughs> following open meeting law, public records law, all that kind of stuff. So that's a that's a liability reduction effort right there. We haven't had one of those, and so this is new and different. Uh, we're asking you to adopt that. Mm -hmm. uh, the second is uh, we're asking for an update to the five-year budget projection from FY 2019 to 24, um, and then the Administrative Policies and Procedures Handbook, which is what you were talking about, which we last did in 2013. Yeah. I don't think there's, there's a couple of new sections. Um, they should, uh, one is our OPEB policy mm -hmm. now on, and we just did a one-pager on that. And again, that might be something we revisit and make a little bit more out of mm -hmm. later on, but uh, basically setting our goals for erasing it by the 2.5% and how it's funded. And how it's funded. And, uh, yeah. The other year is with us because so many towns haven't even done it. And, and I hope yeah. and you know, and, doing that. And five years ago, we didn't have one, so I'm hoping that yeah. you know the, the, the effort that the town has made in supporting and putting money in this direction mm -hmm. hopefully will be something else that will reflect well on us. Mm -hmm. We're barely covering the retirees originally five or six years ago. We're where? You were just about covering the retirees mm -hmm. five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And David, what you just said, does that cover the motion? Yeah, so. Can I have a motion off that motion? I will. I'll make that motion. <laughs> right, thank off you. Of that. Second. Okay. Um, and so that just covers. That covers all the plans and everything you need. Mm -hmm. That's going to be my mm -hmm. question. Just make sure we got it all. Um, okay, any further discussion on those items? I'd like to wait till next week. I haven't read through them all. I've only read through about half of them. Okay, you want to wait? Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you guys think? Um, do we want to wait until next week or? Is there any urgency to have this done this week? Well, as she said, it would be moving it forward. Right. You know, we're coming to the end of the fiscal year here. Yeah. The, yeah uh, we're, we're meeting with the s &P on uh, Friday. Friday the 21st. Friday. So they're meeting Wednesday. If they're meeting Wednesday, that'll work. So we could wait until next Wednesday if that yep. if you so choose. Yeah. Yeah. And Molly yeah. would have a chance to go through them, too. And she's going to be she's part of the committee, too. Yeah, so I mean, that's fine. Yeah. I don't mind waiting. I just thought we could expedite it for you. Um, At least we can express for the three of us are support for that so that way yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. And, and then we can do the <laughs> yeah, final yeah, approval yeah, yeah, next yeah. week. We're yeah. definitely heading in the right, right. direction. Right. But I yeah. You'd like a little more time to review yeah. it and see uh, if you have any comments. Yeah, that's understandable. I would ask if in the meantime there is something you do have questions about. It would be a lot easier I mean, if you, just because the time constraint we'll now have on the other end, yeah. if you could put it in an email or give a call or something that we'd be ready to address and maybe you'll find something that needs to, maybe you'll find some typos that we need to, we'll change and we'll have it ready for Wednesday night. Yeah. So please feel free in the meantime as you're reading through and I know there's a lot of material, just let me, let us know yeah. if anything you have questions and on. We talked a little bit about this at the department head meeting. We let everybody know that uh, Linda and I were under a time crunch. We just had to get it done. Um, and we have not had the luxury of going out to the departments and showing them sections that may be important to them. So we acknowledge that, that that's work we still need to do and that there will be an opportunity for people to weigh in on. Yeah. on uh, right. Which is the way we want to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll pull my motion till next week. Okay. Thank right. you. Yeah, and I, I did get a chance to read through some of them and they were, I thought it was great information. It was wasn't too long, you know how some things can be almost too intense to read. I thought it had a really, it got to the point on a lot of things, described what you did, and I thought it was a good job. I mean, I didn't understand every <laughs> detail, but I definitely thought it was a good presentation of what you've done and documenting what you do, so. I think the volunteer oh, yeah, I handbook at that. Is, uh, alone is fantastic to have. Yeah, so. yeah. I actually didn't have anything yeah. to do with that, yeah. so yes, yeah. Yeah. David, uh, and yeah, I, I, thought that I, loving, that. I lovingly stole it from another town. <laughs> there we go. Oh, plagiarism. Well, there we go. <laughs> One thing we can do in town <laughs> government. Yeah, so. public, it's, it's allowed. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, no, but yeah, thank you both for your efforts on doing this, and uh, look forward to approving it next week. So. Okay. And our uh, senior who uh, tax work off person, Linda Ledoux, who helped us with the oh, nice. volunteer nice. appointment book, the appointed volunteer handbook. She did a lot of work on it. Great. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, thank you, and we will postpone until next week that right. vote, and mm -hmm. uh, let Molly get back. 
Okay, we have a 7.30 public hearing for... Oh, Linda, do you have one more thing? Yeah, I, I don't want to leave if there's still something to... That you oh, need to was sign. there something? Yeah, let but me... That's okay, you can move on to your appointment. I just want, didn't want to leave if you, there's something you needed before later. I can't remember which which one of these documents it was. Oh, was no. that for a... Yeah. The abatement? Was that what the... It no. wasn't the abatement. It was it a fire substation? Yes. It's the, the uh, it's the contract for the grant. Oh, the grant. We don't have to have it for the fire station <coughs> contract. <coughs> so let's just take yeah, this briefly out of order, if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's the fine. Yeah. Board. Um, I'm not sure how to say this because the, the information okay. is supposed to be embargoed by the state uh, so that if the we governor do. can make an announcement, but we did land a grant um, and the grant the amount is $15,000 and the contract is here and it needs to be signed uh, by $15,000 for what? Uh, for uh, municipal vulnerability preparedness assessment. It's a planning grant which okay. will qualify us for big bucks next round. And when I say big bucks, uh, in the order of hundreds of thousands of dollars for natural hazards mitigation. Where do we sign? <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. You, you, um, you do or it or is it just so uh, would we like to make a motion? We're not allowed to get yeah. the grant money. Yeah, exactly. Would we like to make a motion that if we were to it's uh, <laughs> it's such a grant, we yeah. approve it. So moved. Yeah, second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, and so with that all set, we could move on to the public hearing for water and sewer rates. Is it just you saying this? And, uh, yeah. um, and I was actually going to see if anyone is here tonight to for the hearing. Specifically, I know you are, Christopher, but I was hoping we could maybe postpone the actual hearing, even though we have it posted, and discuss some sewer options looking toward the future and maybe focus on that a little bit for this meeting and then next week have another hearing on sewer rates when Molly's back. Talk about it further. I don't know if you guys had been discussing some options for sewer looking into the future and yeah, uh, what we could possibly do. I can throw out a couple things that would help us in the meantime. So let's show, let's say we'll uh, make a motion to table oh. the public hearing and uh, not table it, but Postpone. to reconvene next Risky. week with the uh, hearing. Second. So okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So talking about <laughs> our issue here is the sewer enterprise fund is in not great shape. Uh, the water enterprise fund is okay. And so talking with Chris and Sharon and uh, Mike Pequinot and I uh, talked with Molly a little bit and David, um, there's a couple of things that we can kind of do to patch it up in the meantime. One of which is, um, and it's good that you're still here, it's maybe, uh, the payment on the sewer um, debt in interest is about 126000 or so that a year. Right. And so what we were looking for is that on a yearly basis, probably for this year and next year, what we need to do at least is to cover those payments out of ta through taxation rather than out of the enterprise fund because otherwise we're going to be in real bad shape with the enterprise fund so it'd be, it'd be helpful if we could kind of save the three hundred thousand dollars over the next two years to build back up the enterprise fund so how many the, years is that huh? how many years was that loan for was that 20 um, for the plant for the, for the water two stations I, I can get that back to you. I, it's, in, it's at least another 10 years. Okay. So, but what I, I think we're looking at is, uh, I, I guess, for now, to take care of this, this year's payment uh, through taxation. I don't know if it would be from free cash. I don't know if it would be from some other source. Um, if we're able to do that, that would be a big help. And we'd probably have to do the same thing next year in order to keep ourselves solvent. Um, so that's that's the first suggestion. Mm -hmm. um, so that'd be about 126,000 this this year. Um, I know the argument. I'm not a sewer customer. I'm a septic guy. So, but I know, and that's the argument I get from a lot of people is, well, I'm not a sewer customer. Why should I pay for it? Well, 
everybody benefits from Route 9, like John said, a million we've times. Been, we've been through it, and I've been through this a million times, and four years ago when we had put those pump stations in, I had said we should be taking this out of taxation because it directly affects all the taxpayers and all the rates. Mm -hmm. And everybody ignored me back then. Now, if you did that, you're a million and a quarter right now at 126000 for 10 years, roughly, you said. I, I, th I think it was 20. Do you want to know tonight? I think do, I, do I have, have that extra. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, you know, there, there's there's a million and a quarter right there. I think it was 20 that, years. That would stabilize that account. Total. I thought he was asking how many more. Do you, do you want? No, uh, I, it was 20. It was I thought you wanted to know how much was that. It was 20, and it's only been four years, so that's easy. So 16. it's times 16. Oh, nice. Yeah. So okay. the issue is that if we don't pay this out through taxation right now or free cash or whatever, um, that we're going to have to be doing some massive increases in the rates. And even with those increases, I don't think we're going to repair the, the situation we're in with the Enterprise Fund. Mm -hmm. So this is a Band-Aid to kind of rebuild those funds without having to rely on just the increased rates. Um, so I, I'll, I'll let Chris comment on it. I mean, that is, is that a good, a, a decent first step to kind of rebuilding things? I know we yes. have some more to talk about, but... Yes, it's a very decent uh, first step. <laughs> And so that would have to be something that's put on the town meeting warrant for the fall? Uh, yes, so that would be an infusion of, of some money, whether that be free cash or some mm -hmm. other fund, into the sewer enterprise fund in order to pay for the debt interest in mm -hmm. principal. There are also some other one-time capital expenses within the sewer budget that it also could be applied against, so mm -hmm. that would be a further... Uh, savings to or s further support for the solvency of the uh, enterprise fund as well as the service level solvency of the enterprise fund. So I think I think in a long term and I, and I said it this before too I said you know we need to uh, I had told Chris and I had told you David I told everybody you know if, if we set it in stone that we put 2,000 feet of the sleet line in a year out of capital you know, and take it out of taxation, and that will, would ease the sewer lines, that would ease the water lines, and it'd be going to the ground and we'd be getting something for it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not just being wasted mm -hmm. uh, on, on the budgets. You know, this is, this is actually infra infrastructure improvements. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, We're seeing it being done. The, the, pro the proposal is a good one if, for example, after if the board also implement the the one on the table right now, then as we it becomes an ongoing uh, every year capital where we come up with uh, part of uh, maintaining the the system, and then we we present the, the budget to the, to the capital committee to approve. Mm -hmm. So this way we it becomes a, a yearly or bi yearly maintenance program, and so at the same time trying to rescue the, um, the fund. So yeah, that would be a good idea. So we'd basically be looking at shifting some sewer improvement to the taxpayer capital yes. account instead of the sewer enterprise yes. account. At least on the short run. In the short term, yes. until we were able to rebuild the yes. coffers in that. that <coughs> so if I can make a motion that, uh, and I know this has to go to town meeting, but if the select board supports the idea of um, paying the debt and interest payments through taxation for this year uh, for this, instead of the sewer enterprise fund to help uh, uh, keep so, it, so yeah. <laughs> postpone the inevitable. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I mean, these are numbers we know. You know, we just put, se uh, we spent $78,000 on the sleet line for the emergency repairs on Route 9 for sewer line. Uh, at 1,700 feet is $45 a foot. We know that. We know how much it is a foot to put the water lines mm -hmm. in. How much a foot to put the water lines in? To excavate. Duct, them duct in. iron. We just did it in the center of town here. What was it, like 20 something dollars a foot or something? David, when we did the ductile through this last section of Route 9? Something like that, yeah. So we've got those numbers. Those are good numbers, mm -hmm. you know? And, and we can make some progress here and get some of these repairs done. Which we should be doing. Which we should have been doing right along. Okay, so you had a motion to 
cover the debt and interest payments for this year for this year out of taxation rather than out of the enterprise fund and basically I mean really is the motion to put that on the town meeting right. warrant right. I'll yeah. second that okay uh, any further discussion on that particular topic yeah but not that I'm arguing for or against this but there is also another option which uh, is presented to you in the capital improvement plan uh, if you go to page 64 there's a proposal for a capital exclusion vote. This is something that's allowed by state law. It'd be a way of dedicating a uh, certain amount of dollars raised by taxation to capital purposes, which you could direct exclusively to the sewer if you wish. That's my uh, next topic. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you're jumping, <laughs> jumping around. All right, so I, I yield okay. the floor. <laughs> yeah, I yield the floor. You know, like, as I said, uh, at our last meeting, you know, there, there's there's a lot of other options. There's a lot of other communities. I went to a few of them and I looked at how they set up their budgets and how they're spending their money and how their rates are uh, addressed. And there's some good ideas out there. There really are, and, and so they're we working. So, so yeah, communities. we have a, we have a motion for putting that on the town meeting warrant. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and then uh, the second thing. This is going to take more than one angle to get this done. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is probably a little bit more controversial. But so right now, through in our tax bill, we take three percent and we give it to CPA. Um, and so one of the biggest things I've been hearing is people don't want their taxes to go up by paying additional taxes to prop up the enterprise funds and do whatever else. So uh, what I'm we're talking about is temporarily at least and this is something we can readdress in the future would be reduce the CPA amount from 3% down to 2% and take that 1% so it's revenue neutral to the taxpayers mm -hmm. and set that aside to go for water and sewer like for, for sure. what David was talking about so yes, I think I paid that kind yes. of emotion you did. talking about it before didn't yep. I <laughs> I'll give you credit for that <laughs> and all these nice years are here we're just not listening to each other <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> no, I, I all these great ideas, ideas are here we're just not listening because to each other because we have we have a good amount of money that's in CPA right, right now and, and that and, was my thing yeah and we can always readdress this in a couple years but right now this is the there's 2.3 million in the bank with CPA and we're just about broke with the sewer enterprise fund and just for kind of a frame of reference for people that are that are watching we've been at 90% roughly plant capacity the last few months over what is it over 80% for the rolling calendar year DEP steps in and basically takes over running the plant and then we're looking at millions of dollars in expansion and all, all kinds of other things so if we don't straighten out this we're, we're, we're going to be in big trouble down the line and people are going to see their taxes go up quite a bit for things so like my question is does that have to go on town meeting more for the fall or can we yeah, do that so as a board you're, you're talking about two two steps here you're talking about a reduction in cpa and there's a whole right. a whole bunch of processes for that yeah, so we can't just vote on it as two board. things no, 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 no. <coughs> uh, we probably can vote to pursue it i mean yeah. right and then the other is the capital ex uh, capital exclusion vote mm -hmm. would be a town meeting vote plus a, a ballot vote but after that it's have you seen vote. these options do you have any other ideas I haven't, I haven't seen can we get a copy of these list to her? he has it in it, there it's uh, in the capital plan starting on page yep. 64 okay. so um, make a motion yeah, uh, so I'd like to just make a motion that we pursue or that we put this on town meeting warrant for the fall uh, that we reduce CPA by 1% and put that 1% to a, what did you call it, capital exclusion? Well, it would re reduce it by 1% and then you raise a 1% under the capital exclusion as a revenue neutral. Right. But uh, rededicating For infrastructure those. for water and sewer. Okay. Right. Yeah. So you dedicate it. Right. Dedicate, okay. yes. So you're not changing anybody's amount that they yes. already haven't taken yeah, yes. out. It's just be reallocating, reallocating it to our, our needs of the town right now. Yeah. Right and now. once we, and at least my intention here is that once we kind of stabilize the sewer <laughs> enterprise fund, um, I, we can send it back to CPA because I'm all for CPA. Yeah. But right now, the enterprise fund's broke. Yeah. So. yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. All right. Motion. Do we have a motion? What dollar amount is that? One percent. It would be, you oh, know, one hundred thousand thereabouts. Thank you. Um, yeah, was that a motion and a second? Mm 
Linda, did I get that number right? Is it 1% of that? the whole budget? No, no, no. no. So the CPA gets um, about $300,000 a year. Yes. So yeah. that 1% reduction would be $100,000. Right. That's good. Right. Okay. Any further discussion on that option? We are going to, this is a vote just to pursue that option. Not to put it on the town warrant in the fall. Okay. Okay. That's the motion. Yeah. I, I mean, motion. It, if, if. it's possible that, since they are two different things, that people can vote to do the. Yeah. Exclusion and uh, not reduce CPA. Well, and that's that's going to be the trick. Yes, because no, it, just, yes. Yes. If, if you could leave it on both ways. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It'll just be making exactly. people realize that if they vote no for one and yes for the other, then their taxes are going to go up by another one percent. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. so that has to be explained to them. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any other options with regards to sewer? Excuse myself. And water. Yeah, so I've, I've developed notes about uh, just brainstorming. Some of these are good ideas, some of these are not so good ideas. Mm -hmm. Some of them are short term band aid approaches, and some of them are long range. Uh, I think we should concentrate on the long range ones right now at this point. Seriously. We're, we're too far gone right now not to take something seriously for the next we're doing a five and ten year plan and and we need to adjust right now for these it's, well here let's let david finish what he's going to say and then go from there yeah so i mean the, there are any number of things that we could be talking about um let's see it, who to reducing expenses wherever possible uh the transfer we were just talking about but also getting in touch with the town of Amherst about some of the proposals that they've had on the table for years affecting both water and sewer that might be uh, beneficial to us as well as pursuing the anaerobic digester up in Greenfield which would be a real home run if we could uh, get that mm -hmm. and the city, city council up in Greenfield did um, they approved it but that's a small scale UMass had their digester in and, and Amherst really was not in favor of, and I'd like to know why. So I will sure. say that uh, as far as dealing with neighboring towns and making an agreement with them, I can tell you that Amherst is has some interest in possibly taking some of our sewer in exchange for maybe some water. Uh, if we could uh, maybe get one of the wells, the Callahan wells, back up and running, um, if that's a possibility. So that's my there's, water water. Oh, I'm sorry, my water. Yeah. So there's um, there's options out there, yeah. and uh, if we are to stay at this 90 percent of our capacity in the plant, it may help us to avoid having to expand the plant for at least a little while. Yeah. Um, and are there some easy ways to get sewer from close to the Amherst line there? Yeah. And the, the, me and Guilford were actually talking about it back when he was on the board yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Mill Valley Road pump station, which handles about half the flow of our plant, maybe a little bit more, uh, is two miles down the road to, to their main sewer line. Yeah. A little over two miles. So a designated line, pressure the pressure line that we have, mm -hmm. you know, we could turn on to them, put a line in, and, and pay per gallon to, to have it treated. Yeah. Because they're in the process of, a, of a sewer expansion themselves over there. So. Mm -hmm. And at one time that was a regional plant, and that's the question I had that nobody wants to answer. Uh, UMass wanted to fund the digester for most of Western Mass at that time, but Amherst don't have the ca uh, capability of treating their water, which if they're going to do a major improvement, they might be able to. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So what's over we, there by the uh, new power plant there by the uh, football field or the practice fields. There is a sewer plant there. That was new in 1979. 79, and that's on our land. Yes, and they pay taxes on it. They pay taxes on it. We've been through all of that with yeah. Guilford because we've had yeah. a few conversations about all of that. So, and uh, why can't sewer, we tap into that? Their sewer line comes through the town of Hadley also, going to the Connecticut River, their effluent line. 
Probably Lake Warner too. I'm not no, sure. it used to. <laughs> the old plant used to go into Lake Warner. Yes. The new plant goes a designated river. line to the river from there. Down by Stockbridge, right there. Yeah, yeah. that goes down yeah. Stockbridge Road. Yeah. Because that's how we ended up getting sewer in Stockbridge was their old sewer line. Uh, we connected into, and mm -hmm. we utilize it for our sewer now. Yeah. Okay. So there's some options there there's, potentially there's a lot. as well. We, we really need to sit down and and, and mm. hash this all out at some point. The other question I would have, David, is um, if we were to suspend the administrative charges formula for our sewer for a year or two, how how would that affect the rest of the budget? Would it and and how much would it save the enterprise fund in order to kind of build it up here? For so if you suspended all of it, it would save about two hundred thousand dollars per year just um, for sewer just for sewer um, you would um, you would have to find that within the budget yeah um, that would be that would be a, a, a shortfall in the budget that you would have to form, uh, find somewhere either right. through new revenues or trimming expenses elsewhere <coughs> okay so, so I mean we sewer to pay for that we shouldn't be mm -hmm. through these well, exchanges I think uh, I think in, if you recall my presentation about the uh, administrative charges, uh, we've tried to make this as fair and as easy as possible. Uh, and, and you strongly disagreed with me. It's all coming around now, David. <coughs> That's why I want you to elaborate a little bit on it. All right. So, <coughs> if you remember, we talked about indirect charges, which were broken into two subgroups of salary and expenses, and then there was direct charges which were charges that we had to uh, pay for things like health insurance, life insurance, Medicare, um, unemployment, um, retirement, uh, all of these things that uh, sewer and water workers uh, are entitled to but are funded through the general fund. So that's a hidden cost to the taxpayers for that. And then the third part of that would be the OPEP uh, charges and we've uh, We've uh, been asking the, the three enterprise funds to help contribute towards the OPEP expenses because they all have employees, they all are entitled to retirement benefits when they do retire, and some of them have. Um, so uh, that's, that's the enterprise administrative charges. Uh, we can get into the weeds, and I don't think we... we would be prepared to do that. I can bring this information back on the 19th with a uh, with more information built right into the uh, uh, the agenda. We can talk about it. But m my sense of the uh, of the matter is, is that the indirect charges are the only place where you could go and say, I disagree with this. I disagree with that. Everything else is pretty much rip and read. Um, the indirect charges, I think, are extremely fair uh, in that we're asking um, the collector to uh, devote 3% of her time to a uh, to the sewer enterprise fund, 3% of her time to the uh, water uh, fund, and we all know that that's not the case. We all know that she's uh, devoting much more time to supporting sewer and water and all that she does in terms of billing, collecting, administering, following up on on the collections there. So um, in my mind, I think the indirect charges are, are fair, the direct charges are rip and read, and the OPEP charges are just driven by a formula. Okay, so why don't we take all this information, come back on the 19th with more of a plan. I think we've kind of taken some steps to work toward reducing, to try to save this fund a little bit. Um, you know, I think some of the Amherst options and discussions along those lines are longer term, and I'm not quite sure how we engage those discussions, but maybe in the future we can have a meeting with yeah. people there to try to start you that know, conversation I, and, and see I what know, it would yeah, look like. I, I know I but, said maybe we ought to address Pioneer Valley planning and, and this also, you know, on a, on a bigger scale. If it's something like this, we're going to uh, entertain with Amherst. You know, if it is a regional plant or it isn't a regional plant, or UMass wants to get involved with it, with that digester, there's a lot of money with those two other entities 
that that could fund a, you know fund a lot of this along with a with our community agreement. You know, yeah. it's not just us and them. It's it's a bigger picture here. And and Amherst will help as far as capacity to keep us from having to expand the plant possibly. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we can work on. Um, but it's not going to help prop up the enterprise fund. So, yeah. So that's nothing that's that's super urgent at this point because is is it your opinion that it's because of the rainfall that we're at the ninety percent is that about the only <laughs> reason that <laughs> why do you think we have such a huge spike in the we have, we have uh, volume right now mm -hmm. because of uh, businesses okay. and uh, so. So, do you see that continuing over the rest of the year, or are we going to drop back down? To I think we'll drop down a little bit. Okay. Especially because of this uh, summer window, the students are out, and then as they come back, and also the hotels are getting filled, right. it will it, to go back. So we've got a couple of months to. Yeah. Because yeah. I think we have another another fifty thousand square foot hotel possibly going in on Route Nine as well. So yeah. um, well, it's the same yeah. hotel that's there. They're just going to re-expand it. Right. They're going to redo it. Okay. Redo it. So okay. there's not. It's, it's, it's not a new there. building. It's okay. not a new building. Okay. It's, well, it'll be a new building, but it. I thought not they had a, another a new story. There. Yeah. Another story, story. but it, it's going to be a little bit more. But so, I, so I think for the these options, it will help the enterprise when this. Yeah, and, and maybe with some of these steps we've taken, maybe we could look at how that would affect rates, you know, and if we need yeah, to change with, them. With, with these steps for one or two years, and then also we come in into, uh, into agreements, uh, which you're right, is not an immediate effect, but with the debt exclusions and stuff, it would give us a good healthy start mm -hmm. to rebuild. Also, um, with the as we go procedure with Pablo, it also help us. The other thing that I would like the board to also put, as the board is thinking through many options right now, uh, is um, the um, DEP and EPA concern about staffing, minimum staff. Yeah. Uh, we are also expecting EPA to stop by and DEP next month for work they come in. They've, they've risen to road that they'll be coming in in July. Uh, our thinking is, we may also have the same issue with staff. So that I will wait for them to come in and, and then go through what their concerns are. And then we hopefully we get once once we get their correspondence, uh, we'll be recommending to the board <coughs> a couple of options. Okay. Thank oh. you. Linda, did you happen to get those years? Is it sixteen years? Are you sure? Uh, let me go next Because one. sixteen uh, years out of yeah. 126,000 is 2 million 16,000. I, I think it's less than that, John. I, I think right. it was before 2016. Well, I, I mean, like, I'm just looking, back to 14. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a term alone, so right. it, even if, if it goes back to 10 years, we're still yeah. talking over a million dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. It is it, that it, high. It's, it's a lot of money. Yeah. But uh, we knew the price was there when we had to do the pumps. I mean, there wasn't yeah. any way of getting around that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's going to play into our discussion for next week with the planning board as far as adding sewer customers. Yeah. We were looking at that as a possibility maybe to prop things yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. That could bring us down. That could hurt us, <laughs> yeah. so unfortunately. So. It'll cost you twice as much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, can, Chris, can you stick around for the crossbar? Yeah. yeah, that's what I was going to go to next. So uh, unless there's anything else you need to say about that, I'd like to just move on to the elementary school zone. Um, so David, uh, you had, or David Phil, you had something to um, work on with that. Oh, my connection to server just stopped, so I was trying to pull the page, and it's not going there. Well, there's no but attachment. So. No attachment, yeah. but uh, it had to do with trying to, you know, slow down some traffic along in front of the elementary school, maybe have some cascading effects to okay. um, Rocky Hill Road in that area. So. I don't know if you have anything sure. to say specifically. So uh, several years ago, they tried to establish a school zone in front of the elementary school. Uh, someone was told no by somebody at Mass DOT. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, our one of our fellow select board members on the Hatfield Select Board was able to point me in the right direction uh, to talk to uh, Mass DOT. 
they gave me a very different story. Uh, maybe leadership has changed, whatever, but they basically told us that we have the ability to establish this permanent school zone there with flashing lights, whatever else we would like to do. Uh, the school zone just needs to meet the requirements, the state requirements of a school zone, which it does with the exception that there is no crosswalk anywhere in front of um, the elementary school. So mm -hmm. there needs to be a crosswalk. Uh, they the state's great at putting crosswalks under nowhere. <laughs> So there's nowhere for them to cross the street to. There's no sidewalks right. there. And so that that's the key is obviously we're not so interested in the crosswalk itself. We're interested in the school zone and we can't do a school zone without having a crosswalk. So it's kind of like a crosswalk to nowhere, but at the same time that's what the state needs to make yeah. it happen. So uh, I talked to them. Is there any grant money available for it or anything? Or? Well, well, the state do it for us? No, the state won't do it. And the state basically said, have at it, but we're not paying for it. Okay. Um, I tried. <laughs> so uh, Chris was going to, if, if we wanted to pursue this and approve this, Chris wanted to talk possibly to the school to see if they were interested in do, doing some sort of sidewalk in that area, maybe something on the other side. Uh, there are a couple families that cross in front of the school every single day. Uh, luckily, the, the school resource officer is generally there when they're crossing. They cross from the opposite side of the street? Yep. Yeah. They live on River Drive Yep. over there. There's a few families that live over there. So, so I'm not saying that we need to install a crosswalk all the way down there, I'm just, or a sidewalk, I should say. But if we could find a good spot for that crosswalk, <clears throat> then we could accomplish the goal of the school zone. So um, Chris, I, I had asked Chris to look at that and kind of come up with some options of what we could do for a crosswalk there. Um, and then obviously if we wanted to do this, it would be, we'd talk to Dr. McKenzie and find out what the school thinks as well. That sounds fine to me. Yeah, and this was too, you know, a lot to do with traffic right. issues we've been having along that, mm -hmm. that stretch, right. so. Cause we so we talked about flashing lights anyway. Yep. Starting probably at Mr. Mish's house on that corner there. Right. And then another one down towards Rocky Hill Row right. approaching from North to, that's right, north to south. They've got the solar ones, so we only have to run electricity to them now, mm -hmm. so they're and all self-contained. Yeah, and that's what we were going to do under nine. I think yeah. they were like 10 grand for yeah. a set of lights with the high intensity LEDs, and we mm -hmm. could have them turn on, you know, certain hours during school, school's time. Can we look at that in capital for two lights there? Yeah, I mean, that would be under yeah. DPW, correct. Mr. Chairman, after we discussed, I, uh, it's one of the things I'm putting together for my capital for the fourth time here. I also said I'll be talking with the school superintendent <laughs> to see if the school board has enough money for us. Uh, we have to put a crosswalk, but to put a crosswalk, we also need a sidewalk. And then we also need a sidewalk to meet the ADA compliance. Mm -hmm. So, so that's a, and then uh, right now we don't have local funds for sidewalk. So these are the things that I, I, I plan to put together so that uh, during the budget discussions, um, we have a couple of locations for, that would be a good place for sidewalk. And also, if we also meet the requirement for this school zone. So you're just looking at putting a piece of a sidewalk? Uh, if the sidewalk will go, especially in that location, it will go at least, uh, at least uh, up to Rocky Hill because of, and then now, because of cost, it may not, all may not necessarily be concrete. But we ask for, but concrete has to be at the intersections because yeah. of ADA right. math. So, but then, so those are, that uh, will give us, as what will give us, uh, we'll have more length. Concrete will give us more years in terms of, yeah. But then, and then, on the other opposite side, it doesn't have to be as long as the side to Rocky Hill. And the crosswalk has to be in front of the school, that's a requirement? Yeah. Yes, it has to be because of the, they're able to cross. Now it doesn't have to necessarily be at a right intersection, but it has to be close to the intersection. So they can cross, be able to cross from either side. So one of the options we may have is if you're looking at the elementary school to the right hand side, there's kind of an access road there, or something yes. along those lines. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in that area, if we could work it the out. The sidewalk comes through there. 
the east side. Yeah. yeah. Yes. On the east side it does. So on the west side, you may just be able to put a side lock from there to, I guess, yeah. the north lane, right? Correct. Right. And yeah. so that may be the shortest, yes. cheapest possible. Yes. Okay. There, okay. Is a, there is a grant program through Mass DOT called Safe Routes to School mm -hmm. um, that is designed to for something very much like this. So we may be able to get state money for this project. This is something we would explore with Dr. McKenzie. Yeah, that's great. great. Get the school involved, maybe they can write the grant for them. Okay, so. So basically what I'm looking for is a motion to uh, or an approval to pursue installing a crosswalk in front of the school. So that way we can do school. So or to, well, put it on capital base, like pursue the option, right? Because we'd have to put it in the capital, it sounds like. Well, not really, not a school, grant money. Not a school can get the grant for it. Or we can get a grant, but pursue a path toward getting this sidewalk, right? So or crosswalk. Okay. Any yeah. further discussion? Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. I'm oh, sorry, Mr. Ferguson. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I don't know if this project, if the board is looking towards putting it in place before the new school year. If that is the, pro if that is the goal of the board, I don't, uh, except, uh, except if they, they have those grants on this, I don't know if we can get a grant to get this done before then, except if you know. I don't know if that's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. The, school year. the police have those temporary we, signs. As long as we vote to move it ahead right now. Right. Yeah. See where we can go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I motioned it. Wait a second. A second. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Everyone's game. Um, okay, we got that. So, uh, fiscal year 2019, end of year budget transfers. Do we, are you, is that ready for prime time? Yeah, all I have is a summary, but I don't actually have the forms. So I'm meeting with the Finance Committee uh, uh, next Wednesday before your meeting. Um, so, if you wanted to defer this issue until we have uh, the proper paperwork, that's okay. Okay. We, we have to get it done by mid-July. That's the drop dead deadline. Okay. Uh, so do we want to have a motion to uh, defer this until next meeting? Unless you want to just vote it. We can just vote it. Yeah. Make a motion to approve the transfers. So, so moved. Okay. How? <laughs> How much are some of these over or under? I, I know I'd like to wait just to see it on uh, I, just the finance committee to review it and have the right forms and just be yep. have it be clear because I just wasn't clear from this what we were yeah, doing so and I don't if we don't have to do it right now so I prefer the to wait. Women insurance went down or that was just a uh, balance that's left. So we're over we're going to be over on the uh, health insurance. Uh, there are many more family plans that were. Uh, <laughs> um, and initiated over the year than we anticipated, so that that's one shortfall. The town hall budget uh, is short because of extra expenditures having to do with IT, principally in support of the grant to make the conversion in the collector's office. Uh, we ran into unexpected expenses that were not grant uh, eligible, so we had to pay for that out of the IT line in town hall. Um, we snow and ice is over by about 22 grand. We knew that. We knew that. Uh, un unemployment insurance, because of many claims, a lot of them school related, were about short by about 15 grand there. Um, the reserve fund of 50,000 is not enough to cover the shortfalls elsewhere, so we're using line to line transfers from property and liability insurance where we're going to see a surplus. And uh, no other unforeseen in the next three weeks. Uh, something could go boom any day now. Uh, <laughs> I hope not. But I don't. I don't see it. Um, <coughs> what else? Uh, so we have a motion on the table. Yeah. Um, I'd like to hold, but if you guys want to vote, you can keep the motion, and we can. No, vote. that's fine. That's Good enough well, I have to delay everything till next week. Let's just call it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll withdraw that motion. <laughs> okay. Okay. Public safety appointments. Uh, select board will appoint staff, volunteers, and officials to municipal committees and services. 
this is a, essentially uh, appointments to those folks in town that carry a firearm for their job. Um, and we can have a motion for the list that's been presented by the police chief and fire, fire chief. chief. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, seniority list by the fire chief and the uh, police chief. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now we can get into uh, Senior Center Library and Fire Substation updates. Since the library is well attended tonight here, I can let you guys go first. I know we want to approve a contract yes, so to move ahead. Yes. So, so, so we sent you the documentation um, on our uh, bidders, and the little bidder was Orlando Anuli. Um, so we just need a letter of intent um, or notice of intent, whatever it's called, um, so that they can proceed, so our architect can let them know. Um, and we just wanted to see if you had any questions for us about that. Motion to approve that. I'll second that. Any further discussion? I was just going to ask, have, you, have they um, constructed any other libraries have experience with that? So it all kind of blended when he was analyzing all that for us. Yeah, He's definitely done municipal buildings. Yeah. No libraries yeah. in Massachusetts, I think in Connecticut. Yeah. I don't think any of the bidders did libraries. Yeah. None of them are. Well, except in Yeah. yeah. There, he, this um, bidder is out of Connecticut, so. Okay. Yeah, they have done municipal buildings, but nothing exactly like this, yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, he vetted well, them all. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He seemed to have Feels no good. reservations really on anyone mm -hmm. who bid on the project, so that that was good news. But this was unfortunately our lowest bidder, um, and yeah. it wasn't that low. It wasn't that but, low. Yeah. So how do you guys feel about the budget? It's all looking good. Um. So for our overall project budget, yes, we're still looking good. This was definitely way over our sort of estimate for the construction portion of the project. So it's about sixty-two thousand over. Okay. Um, what we had anticipated with none of our alternates. So we're getting none of our alternates. We're just going for the, you know, for the base bid. Okay. And that's still over our estimate that we had, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But we had already identified some things that could probably, we could scrimp and save on the sort of non-construction part of the budget. Um, so we think we'll be okay. Okay. How was the pricing compared to the senior center? What was, what was the big, Overage or uh, so uh, both our architect and our OPM were very surprised when the bids all came. They all came in really tightly clustered, um, but it was much more than we had anticipated. And their uh, hypothesis is that it's the tariffs. And so even if folks don't know the tariffs are will be there or not, they sort of are hedging their bets, uh, and that's why they came in so high. And there's really nothing we can do about that. We did talk to them, is there any benefit of sort of, you know, failing the bid and going back out? Um, and they both seemed to think no, that they didn't think the situation was gonna get any better and we would just then be that much further down the road and that much further towards winter mm -hmm. um, without being able to button up our building. So it is what it is and uh, we have no reason to believe that we can't afford everything. It's just we can't sort of get the things that we were hoping would make the library um, you know more sustainable right now but yeah but so opportunities in the future for like the solar array and stuff so okay okay yeah and I know our cost per square foot is 569 so it's quite high Jane you probably know what your price per square foot is yeah that was yeah I was 529 529 okay yeah, but we expected our speed for 69. Yeah, 460. Yeah. But it did not. Yeah. So, significant increase in cost. Yeah, okay. Motion to approve. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, and really, compared to Senior Center, it doesn't sound like that much. It sounds like, like about the, the tariff fees. So. Yeah, that was what their hypothesis was. And they called around to sort of some of their cost estimators and said, hey, this is what we got back, what do you think? And so that was the sort of general consensus because they they were surprised. Okay, all of those in favor? Aye. 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 Who we'll second to that? Aye. Okay, thank you. Um, well, 
good luck. Good luck moving yes. forward, and uh, you know, can't wait to see start moving ahead. So yeah, it's exciting. Excited about that. So yeah. I guess uh, we'll be here next week with some papers. Um, that's the plan, and uh, so we'll get some moving on. Um, one of the things that we were also wanting to make sure was on your radar. Um, so now that we have a contractor, I know they'll start working on sort of a project plan coordinating with the folks that are working on the senior center. And one of the things oh, yeah. that's foremost on everyone's mind is parking. Mm -hmm. um, so once we, you know, have both sides under construction, and I know the contractors have already sort of come up with a plan of having sort of one half of the, you know, I'll just call it a road, and then the other half closed during construction, but it will significantly impact parking. Um, obviously for the library patrons, but we also are not sure whether or not there's even going to be enough parking on site for the contractors. Um, there's going to be a lot of them there. And so we just want to um, have some direction from the select board as to where else folks should park, whether they be patrons or the, the workers. Um, I would say Russell School would be a great spot for them to be <coughs> early uh, as long as we're careful about wrecking the grass and yeah. which we had last time contractors were parked there but uh, mm -hmm. I think that's that's really the only option we have so. yeah I mean we sort of thought that might be an option but we just wanted to make sure yeah. we you know if we, they have any excess equipment or anything they could probably park it over there. We, so. we didn't we didn't want to be in a situation of telling people go park at Russell and have somebody complain and then yeah. you folks say mm -hmm. well, don't let me right. do that so I would just make a motion that we approve uh, Russell School for the use of overflow parking for the library and senior center contractors. Um, but I would like to see the OPM or somebody, um, I guess, hold their contractors accountable for any damages to the grounds. Yeah, I would think maybe we would want to delineate an area that we have for parking. And if you guys are going to be using an area, say the Russell School for parking, yeah. We could clear an area there for parking, but at the end of the project, they just, you know, when they're seeding the lawn at the library, they seed the lawn at the Russell School or whatever it is to repair it. I don't know, something along those lines, because that is what happened and before. I think we need to remind them there is no parking at the Wilton. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, see, yeah. we wanted to avoid things like that. That's why we yeah. figured if we could get some clear yeah, guidance ahead of time. Yeah. Um, and so and now right. that we've heard this, we'll make sure that we communicate at least to our OPM. And I know he's in, in you know, contact with Phil, so that the conversation will go both ways. Um, for us, we have one additional concern. We don't know what your thinking is around here, but ours is around um, a handicapped accessible. Um, spot at least one spot for library patrons so our architect has told us there's no reason that the library cannot be open the entire time during construction even though that road basically will be blocked off that there will be access to come down so just envision someone in a wheelchair for example could come down the sidewalk in middle street and basically sort of turn into the library parking lot and go across the parking spaces and come into our ramp that way. So remember our entryway off Middle Street or off Route 9, um, directly off Route 9 is not handicapped accessible. So that's the only way they can get in. Mm -hmm. So we didn't know what um, what our ability to use, um, and we haven't even seen the construction plans, but your feeling about using some of the grass on the existing Goodwin uh, parcel for one handicapped uh, space and we probably all need to see a picture of this before we can really I think we just wanted you to know we don't want a decision necessarily yeah. we want you to just know these are the things we're thinking about yeah. well yeah I think like it's one a temporary hand, spot one hand, yes yeah. Yeah. one temporary yeah. handicap spot down by the sidewalk yes where the park, existing parking lot is yeah. right now yeah. exactly yeah. something to that effect once I, everyone has seen sort of the you know the lines that they're they're drawing because i'm sure they're going to draw this all out what the the actual site plan is going to look like um, well i i can add that to my motion but yes yeah, so i think that we probably have to go to the planning board anyways for that so okay we, well that's exactly why we're reading up do we need to who do we need to so talk to i would say if we can say yes to it then you can go to them and get there okay oh, so that's our next step this plan great i will assume so Okay. Your OPM might have to do that. Yeah, okay, yeah that's fine. This is why we're bringing it up, just so we could get all the I information. I don't think it's going to be a big issue. Yeah. So uh, then I'll amend the motion. I'll, I'll make a motion we allow Russell School to be used for senior center and library contractor parking. Um, and we'll have the OPM negotiate or um, 
oversee uh, the use of those grounds to make sure no damages occur, and also uh, give select board approval for one temporary handicapped parking spot on the current grass area in front of the Goodwin. <coughs> that will be great. Yeah. So and if it can happen, it can happen, though. <coughs> Any other discussion on that? Okay, well, all those in favor? Well, nope. Sorry, I just oh, want to say, so would, would we also be referring library patients yeah, to use Russell School Parking? Because you're, I hear you saying contractors or both properties. Well, as as what contractors. I'm looking at is they could, the library patrons can use the marked spots here on Middle Street, yeah. but I was referring to the contractors parking on the other oh, side no. of the grass where oh, okay. that was yeah. previously yeah. fenced off by the last uh, what, ETNL and, yeah. and yeah. those guys. Oh, okay. So the contractor can park close up by the building as long as oh, it's okay with the fire chief oh. and the so big store stuff, right right whatever. Right 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 here. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. We don't need permission, obviously, to use the, not obviously, but to use those spots. Yeah, the regular spots. From patrons. That's town spots. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay. Those aren't dedicated to the town. Um, I know, I know no. we discussed it a year or so ago to, to put another parking yep. lot in similar mm -hmm. to what was there yeah. just for that purpose, but we never got to it. Yeah, I would say the one spot they couldn't park is the town hall parking yeah. lot here because this gets yeah. pretty full okay. as it right. is. Right, so. yeah. They, they wouldn't find a spot anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Between the church and, and yeah. us, there's, there's not usually okay. a spot hey. here. And I would just ask that your OPMs come up with a plan and just present it to us, and then we kind of approve yeah. that instead of talking yeah. yes. loosely like we are right yeah. now. Yeah, no, no, and that, that's what we sort of talked about, and we yeah. kept pressing them. They said, well, until we have a contractor, we can't, you know, it's really their job to, to yeah. tell us what, what they're going to need so that yeah. they can plan. And so we thought, well, let's just come and make sure we've identified someplace off site for them. Yeah. So, okay. okay. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Any other issues you guys have going right now? All the issues you guys have that we need to address. Yeah. Okay. Um, how about the we move on to the fire substation? We could. I was going to give you a chance to do the fire substation. Okay. <laughs> All right, so on the Senior Center, um, you know, we had a great groundbreaking ceremony last week. Um, went well, was attended by uh, Joe Comerford was there, and uh, representatives from Dan Carey's office were there as well, so it was great to have them. A lot of seniors turned out. Uh, we have a few things to address that I think we encountered at the site. We have one PC, uh, what does the PCO stand for? Potential change order? Proposed change order um, to vote on tonight. Our PCO number three, which we've already voted on metal roofing and removing a clay pipe, has to do with additional unsuitable soils that we were encountered on the site. And this is kind of linked to the clay pipe. Um, it's $5,662.59. Senior Center Building Committee voted to approve that since it's under our $10,000 change and we could keep moving the project forward mm -hmm. with doing this. This was expected in the, or not was expected, was a possibility when we sent the bid out and so there was a price in the bid for disposing of unsuitable soils and we had a certain budget of unsuitable soils in the bid but we exceeded that amount based on actual site conditions. So it's really making up for that difference. Um, and that's the $5,672.59. So I don't know if we could vote on that so here. It's, it's been approved I, by the- It's been approved, um, but so it was within our budget. I don't know with stuff like that if then we need to vote here as well. You didn't have to come well. back to us for anything less, less than, than 10,000. 10, okay. Yeah. You can just inform well, us that yeah, this happened, but I mean, we, we don't have to vote to, on it. We okay. can vote to accept it right now, which is really not a big deal. Okay. No, but they, they didn't have to come yeah. back to us. Yeah. Okay. So we can just, that's fine. And then we have another possible change order, proposed change order, and this has to do with structural fill um, around the foundation and sidewalk areas. So basically, they, you know, poured the foundations, the footings, all those things, went to backfill it with native soil, were compacting the native soil, and kept getting rejected on those compaction tests for what the spec was. And so we need to bring in other structural fill yeah. um, to fill around there to meet the compaction. 
Um, if we don't do that, we risk sidewalks cracking, foundation you know, foundation cracking. issues, those kind of things. So we are looking at a mac, you know, this structural fill to be no more than ten thousand dollars. That's kind of our upper limit that the OPM has said. You know, he's trying to keep it under based on their calculations right what now. What percent are they compacting? I want to say it's like 95% or something like that. I mean, it's pretty, they kept getting rejected. I think it was like 80 something in the 80s with the native fill. Mm -hmm. And it's just because it's so sandy, yeah, you know, so that's sandy silt. Yeah. yeah. That sugar sand falls apart. Yeah. Quickly. It's the Hadley stuff. Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. I don't know if we want to vote on that. So you need a vote on the change order, which bundles together oh. those first three proposals that are known and have been already approved. And the fourth one is uh, under development. We yeah. Don't have anything right so there. I guess, I guess it, it. This is slightly different to me. I didn't know this was how it was going to work. But basically, we bundled three proposed change orders into one change order, complete. So we've already voted on the metal roofing, the removal of the clay pipe, and then I just brought up the unsatisfactory soils. Those three items have been combined into one document. Um, or one change order in the amount of $268,866.44. However, $256,000 plus is the, the metal roof Just alone. Roof. Yeah. So we'll vote on the three now and we'll wait on the fourth. Is that what we're going to do until they do? Okay. Well, if we could vote on the three, I guess I didn't know we had to vote on that yeah. as one item because we already voted on the individual ones. But I guess if we could vote on that, that would be great right All now. Right. Motion to approve the change order for item the first three. Thank you. Second. <laughs> okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And then the, the last item is the proposed change order of up to $10,000 in structural fill. Bring, the, bring the actual number to us and we'll give us full number. Because okay. if, it's, if it's under, you, you guys it's under, can, okay. it doesn't matter. If okay. it's over, we'll... As long as we have that go ahead, we're, we're good. Um, one other thing that came up recently, and I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but uh, when we were excavating the storm <coughs> sewer line from Middle Street over to the site, uh, they encountered a buried structure, or I will say, um, and there was fibrous material in that structure. They immediately called the appropriate personnel. Um, it's a buried treasure. It's not very treasure, it's the opposite. Um, yeah, and it's possibly asbestos. Um, it is in that trench path. Uh, we have been working with a licensed site professional and certified abatement contractor has been called in to remove the material and monitor this trench. Um, but, uh, you know, we have a, f a filing in with the Mass EPA right now, and, or DEP, I'm sorry. And so we have to wait to hear back from them yeah. about how we can proceed. But once we can proceed, it's going to be, you know, by this license yeah. abatement contractor, all these things. Yeah. Um, we're hoping we can just keep digging the trench, yeah. but it's going to be what DEP says to do, what well, we can do. So they're trying to determine whether it is or isn't at this point? Asbestos. Right. Yeah, okay. it's out for material testing, and hopefully we'll know more is it soon. A pipe or is it no, it's a structure. They have, they've already said it is asbestos. It is asbestos, is yes. Is it a pipe? Yeah. Or is no, it looks it's, like somebody used it as a burial ground. Well, well, let's say that correctly. <laughs> it's a, it's, Don't. it's a buried Old structure. Yeah, no, 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 it's, a, it's, it's, it's structures. It's not, it's not anything else. It's like a building was there or they, tore down part of the hooker school and put it there something like that we you know nobody knows what it is exactly but it's because construction once you type touch material it, you can't do anything except stop yeah and wait for them to tell you to go ahead so we don't really know except and, that it's asbestos and so if you go over there you'll see a plastic tarp is on the ground the no, excavator has been washed off yeah. all these things and that's all according to what the DEP on, so. has done the extent of it? no and this is something that could affect the library project so, um, cause there's a good chance we can, you know, we don't know how large it is. I have no idea. So. I mean, no idea what it is. It's a buried structure is what I 
So it's like structural components. Like wall pieces. Wall pieces. I don't know if it's a basement. No. So type, no. oh. Or like a foundation, you know, something. No, you know, I bet you what? they had trouble with one of the walls or something on a new part they built and they buried it. Yeah. Something. Yeah. So so we don't know. Um, but it's it's going to keep moving ahead I've seen and it before, so. see what happens. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it used to happen everywhere. But, but I just want to, if neighbors are concerned or anything like that, there's nothing, you know, nothing is in the air, there's no gas explosion, nothing along those lines, it's just some asbestos that was found in the ground that's going to be removed. Asbestos is rock that came from the ground. Yeah, it's going to be removed according to all the best practices that are around, so, so don't worry. Yeah, so there you go. Um, any other things I'm forgetting, Jane? Or is that pretty much everything? No, project is moving but along. It's moving along, good, it's other really than those exciting. roadblocks. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so. The weekly updates are great, and the, or the, you know, construction yeah, just updates them. is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and People appreciate seeing them on your website. <laughs> you post them on the website. Oh, yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. Uh, okay, uh, fire substation. Yeah, so I'm bringing to you tonight a vote for um, general contractor approval. We had 14 GCs that bid. One was thrown out because they didn't meet uh, all the qualifications. Um, and our lowest bid and recommendation is for Kurtz and Company, and he's out of Westfield. And he comes in at $2,385,550 which is approximately um, $585,000 uh, under bid. Uh, so that money will stay in contention in case we do have No, a library cannot borrow that. <laughs> any change orders. Um, we are, uh, we do not have the deducts anymore. Uh, one was for asphalt shingle roof. We are staying with the metal roof. And the other one was for the purchase of Division II equipment and we're uh, those are have been dropped right now. So those are included in the bid. Correct. Okay. All right. We're in good shape. Then. Mm -hmm. So um, again, you know, maybe some of that money will be used towards uh, uh, stuff that's needed inside that we didn't put in there to begin with. But again, with change orders or whatever might happen, um, that will be there. So I am looking for a vote uh, for us to approve Kurtz and Company as our GC. Motion to approve. Second. All right. Any further discussion? No. Any other questions? I'll okay. Start digging. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So we need to sign that. We also set up two committees last night. One is our uh, finance subcommittee, and then the other one is the general overseeing of the project. So we do have two new committees, but within the within the within existing the, committee. Correct. Oh, uh, the construction and finance. Yes. Well, one's construction and then one is finance, so we mm -hmm. have two with that we formed. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be on those committees? Um, I'm on the finance one mm -hmm. with uh, Mike, uh, Ed Dukevich, and Phil. Um, Phil. Phil. Phil Palumbo? No. no. Okay. Well, Phil's on it too, but there's another Phil on my committee, and I just lost his last name. Okay. Um, Do you want a motion for that? Ten thousand dollar change order as well, so that what you guys can do oh. what you need to do. I think we did that at the last one okay. that we approved them for all of the oh, uh, committees. Okay. That that would be the limit for any committee. Okay. Oh, and then do you want your proposal ad service amendment for Colliers too? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. So we have a OPM contract amendment for Colliers. Now my computer's not working, um, okay. but it's for their services through the rest of um, the project or remainder of the project. Correct. OPM contract amendment. And I was just trying to look up the amount that it's for. It's 48984. Uh, 48984. 48, 48984. Yeah. Okay. And it's an additional 13 months uh, work. And this was just because of the delay getting the project going. Correct. Various things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, motion to approve. Yeah. I'll second that. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. 
I think that is good on all those projects. Thank you for coming. Yeah, good luck. Thank you. Okay, last item, I believe. On, oh, well, we have got a couple more, but uh, last thing here is Hadley Community Electricity Aggregation Project. Um, a lot of people have been uh, asking about this. Um, Unfortunately, my husband said some people have been throwing them away, and I said, well, they're supposed to, if they don't want to join, they need to send in their card saying they don't want to join. So I think yeah. a lot of people aren't aware because, um, not to jump in on you, no, but, no, please. but they were confused with the town of Hadley seal on the outside of the thing, and now on the inside of the bill is about electricity. Right. Yes. So that's... Yeah. And we get so many of the junk mail from different... Correct. Entities for electricity yeah. that nobody understands it. Yeah, so I think there, there was a problem with that billing that went out, and I did see where the senior center is having a date with July 17th? It's next Monday. Oh, June 17th. June 17th. Uh, 2 p.m. On, on your email we got, it was July 17th. Really? Yeah. I think there was an addendum to that. Oh, was it? Yeah. I missed it. Yeah. Get yeah, email. they they sent two of them. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I yeah. You got the first one, not the second one. June seventeenth okay. at two p.m. Okay. Okay. And it's going to be it's going to be by a gentleman, John, who heads up this program. David can say more, but he's going to explain it in a little more detail. It's going to be uh, Hadley Media is going to be there as well. I think it's going to stream live as well as be on Hadley Media. David, I don't know if you want to say a few words yeah, regarding so it. The, the, the the, the vendor was supposed to handle the community outreach and um, that didn't happen in a timely manner and so there's been a lot of confusion about this which is unfortunate. I did talk to the vendor on Tuesday made sure that he understood that this is a dropped ball and could be a dropped opportunity for folks uh, so he's agreed to uh, meet with the senior center at Monday at 2 p.m. Monday the 17th of June that's for everybody, not that's just for, seniors. Right, that's for everybody. That's that's the first informational session. We're also going to get that'll be televised. We'll also get that on uh, a separate uh, showing on uh, Hadley Media. Uh, he's provided me with a press release, which I've looked at and thought that it needs a lot of improvements. So I'm working on that. I'll get that out to the press in the next day or so. Uh, but there's a lot of community outreach that he needs to be doing that. Uh, I'd like to see him here at our next meeting on Wednesday also. If, right. gonna, if he's going to be there on, on Monday at the Senior Center, he should come and, and propose the same speech. Well, they don't need to. He's already taping it and putting it on. We don't need him to well, overkill here. I mean, if they're doing it at I the Senior they Center, they're streaming. People are throwing them away already. Well, if they can't ask questions before they throw something away, then that's not our fault. The only question, question I had was, so this price is through the end of the year, the 10% savings roughly, right, David? Uh, yes. And or, so if we do not opt out of it and we're enrolled into this program at the end of the year, are we still stuck in the program or do we have to get the chance to re-opt out again when they- They said they you can opt out at any time. Yeah, you could Without out. any penalties. If yeah. you keep the phone number. Yeah. <coughs> keep the phone number. Yeah, so that would, uh, you can opt out at any time without penalty. That's what we've been told like, consistently all along. So okay. there's uh, the opt out at the initial phase uh, by July 13th and I have to agree that the law was written in a way that made this an opt-out program. That's not something that the town of Hadley had any control over. Um, but if, after July 13th, if this program is not for somebody, then they can opt out without penalty. But as of right now, it's saving them 10% on their electricity. Yeah, so the uh, right now, we've uh, Eversource is offering uh, let me see, there's so many numbers here. Except I looked at it with my bill and it doesn't save me anything. Oh, it's the 50 same cents. percentage. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, you have, I have Eversource and I, I figured it out to be. And I paid 0 0.091 yeah. or whatever. Well, yeah, the yeah, ever, Eversource right. residential rate right now is uh, 9.85 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, this program is 9.746 per 
kilowatt hour. The real savings will be later on in December. If you look at your December bill from last year, that you were paying something on the order of 12 cents per kilowatt hour. <coughs> this would rise to 10, 21 cents per kilowatt hour. So the energy savings would be larger in the winter time than it would be during the summer time. Um, but this may not be for everybody, and so people take a look at their. You their may save a couple of pennies on a kilowatt hour, but I actually called Eversource, and they may jack up their rates for service, your service fees. So you may not be saving anything. Oh, well, yeah. That, so the I, same thing when Dominion came around and those. I, I called Eversource, and it sounded like a great deal originally, but over a period of time, it was going to end up costing you more to go through another service. I would just encourage you to get a press release, you, the town, to get a press release out in advance of the Monday meeting to tell everybody it's open to the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we can because get some for Saturday's paper or something. Yeah. It really is well, critical that people understand because that's all we're hearing. And I know yeah, everybody hears Scott. phones ringing. Yeah, no, no. yeah. Just, just, just make it clear that it's all ages, all public, not just seniors because it's, it's just at a senior, senior center. So. It's not, it's a yeah. church and yeah. you don't have yeah. to be Catholic. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to pray something good comes from it. <laughs> yeah, so the larger context is that uh, the municipalities and the larger commercial developments have been buying their electricity and aggregate on the bulk market for years and years and years and town of Hadley has saved many thousands of dollars by doing so. Um, this opportunity has never been available to resident homeowners until now so this is an opportunity for folks which again may or may not uh, fit for each household. Just to be <coughs> clear we don't get any money out of this. This is not something that is pouring money into my pockets is not helping out the town at all. It's just an opportunity where there was no opportunity before. Okay. okay. But, as you said, it was badly presented without enough pre-presentation of the program. Yes. Okay. And our last item here is town administrator report. David, I don't know if you have anything in there particular that you would like to let us know about. Um, I'm going to let uh, a lot of it speak for itself. It has been four weeks since we have last met, uh, so there's quite a bit that's happened. We've touched upon a lot of these things uh, in the course of tonight's agenda. Um, uh, we have received information that the MassWorks grant uh, uh, program is now open with an application deadline of August 9th. MassWorks is a grant program that you're eligible once for every, uh, every three years. Right now the total amount of grants available to be distributed to all cities and towns is $80 million. So we're looking around for a substantial project that we can use this money for. Uh, Moody Bridge Road is the first one that jumps to my mind, but there are other ones that could uh, work as well. I'll be working with the Depart uh, DPW to come up with an application by the deadline. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about fire station uh, North Hadley Village Hall. Okay, so we've signed the listing agreement. Uh, we're actively showing the hall. We're, up we're updating the uh, RFP. Uh, working with the uh, with surveyors and the, uh, the real estate broker, and uh, we'll uh, get this thing on the market uh, as soon as we possibly can. But we are showing it actively to prospective buyers, and there's a lot of interest. Okay. Um, uh, you had a meeting last week with one of our public officials. I had a lot of meetings last week. Tuesday I walked in, or Wednesday I walked in, you invited me to a model. One of the representatives or something with your governor's representative? Oh, yeah, so, oh, okay. um, yeah, so uh, the, Mr. Pat Carnavalli of the governor's office in the Western District, Springfield, um, paid a visit on the town of Hadley 
uh, wanted to know, um, is there anything that we uh, need from the governor? Uh, we made it clear that the, <laughs> we made it clear, mm -hmm. uh, but we also packaged it in a way that Hadley is not a town that sits on its hands and waits for problems to occur and then um, goes to the state asking for money. We're actively working on the dike, we're actively working on the Route 9 widening project, we're actively working on fill in the blank on so many different uh, projects that uh, that seem to uh, uh, be music to their ears that we might be asking for some assistance on something that we're already putting money into. So that uh, that was very encouraging. Type of matching funds thing or something? Matching funds, state support, uh, yeah. enhanced uh, uh, rankings on applications to grant agencies. Uh, all of it sounded good. We also conveyed the message to the governor's office that uh, that we're here to work with them. They've got a number of initiatives, some of which we'll be talking about at your next meeting, having to do with zoning and affordable housing. And uh, we made it clear that we're willing to partner with the, the, the executive office in order to get things done to help support the people of the Commonwealth. Um, Nixell update, this is now up uh, up and ready. Uh, a lot of people worked very hard on it. David, I know that uh, you were instrumental in making it happen. Uh, we have a July uh, switch over from the old code red system. Uh, Nixell will, is, is up and running right now, so we'll run in tandem until July 1st, or I think technically July 9th. Um, no major bugs? Not so far. Not so far. Hadley Kids, and this is something that I'm looking for a little bit of support uh, or feedback from the board on. Um, we agreed that Hadley Kids would transfer its uh, program to the Park and Rec Commission sometime. And Park and Rec has been pursuing licensing with the Massachusetts Department of Early Education and Care. For various regulatory reasons, that licensing process has been delayed and Hadley Kids Incorporated is exploring transferring the program to the Hadley School District. If so, then the program would fall under less restrictive guidelines of the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Talks with the school department are ongoing in this matter of transfer of programs and their finances will be on the school board agenda for next week. So is this an appropriate way to move this project forward? Yes. Probably. I mean, if it keeps that program running, it's essential to a lot of families yeah. in Hadley, so yeah. I think we should be doing whatever we need to do. It's a revenue generator, too. So yeah. yeah. Whoever needs to run it, yeah. Yeah. So what was, what's the caveat to, um, I mean, we're not having a conversation with Park and Rec in here. And yeah, no, yeah, I'd like so to hear their... And now all of a sudden <laughs> we're transferring it to the school department without, I, I'd like to hear what they have to say about it. Yeah, but I think that the main thing is, is that uh, the school wants to hear that this is something that you're open to. Yeah. Um, and well, yeah, as long as it keeps the program going, but yeah. who's going to actually run it and take it over? I don't know if the school department has the um, staff and the ability to do that, whereas Park and Rec wanted to undertake that, and it's part of their program anyway. Right, yeah. I did like it under the Park and Rec umbrella. I thought that was a great fit, but if mm -hmm. there's something with the... Can the school department, or par yeah. school depart department, Merge with partner park with and Park and Rec? Yeah. All right, just that was my so next let, question. Me, let me ask that question of uh, Dr. McKenzie and uh, the Park and Rec commissioners. Um, <coughs> the, the, the main issue is with the Park and Rec department is that the regulatory requirements are so stringent they just can't make any real headway on it. Or mm -hmm. you have a program that may fall apart. Um, so um, Again, I'd like to see if they could partner with the school. Okay. I'll take that as direction. Uh, Route nine widening. Uh, we have a we have an update there. That there's a stakeholders meeting on June twenty fifth over at Northampton at District two headquarters. Um, at that meeting, when we talked about this during the department head meeting today, 
The town will also address the rotary being constructed on the Northampton side of the Coolidge Bridge. That is the Bridge. most stupidest thing they're ever doing. I, <laughs> I'll, I can put that right out there. I cannot picture the amount of traffic going and coming over that bridge to go to a rotary. I just want to say that. Okay. Well, we weren't included in no any... No kidding. <laughs> okay, we were not included in any kind of information. You know where the town line is there? Yeah. <laughs> in the middle of the bridge. Exactly. So we're going to take that information to them on and then they start talking about the widening. It's too late right now because... It's no, I think the middle of the bridge coming eastbound would be a perfect place oh, to put a toll. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would I'm be with great you. for Hadley. <clears throat> All right, moving right along, April revenues look good, uh, very healthy there. A uh, April expenses still showing it uh, going a little uh, higher than we had expected. Uh, but I did an analysis of all the expenditures in the budget and everybody seems to be coming in uh, right where they need to be coming in for this time of year. Uh, the reason why that's been pushed a little higher on uh, is that we had to make one-time payments for health insurance, retirement, for um, uh, property and casualty <coughs> insurance, uh, uh, police fire accidents. Some of those things were one-time payments and that uh, pushed the numbers a little higher, but uh, we're going to monitor that and make sure that we're going to come in okay. Uh, we covered that, we covered that. My weekly payroll, okay, so this is the first week that we had, uh, ran that. We talked about it at the department head meeting. It seems to be running without a problem. Uh, expected to save $3,000 over the uh, course of the year, but most importantly, it frees up personnel in the treasurer's office to focus on higher order functions that will benefit the town's fiscal management and planning. So that project is now substantially complete and we'll be doing bi weekly payroll from now on. Um, and then just to remind people that on Tuesday, June 18th, we have the debt exclusion and the non-binding uh, ballot question having to do with the demolition of North Hadley Village Hall. So come vote, uh, 12 to 8 is the polling hour, are the polling hours <coughs> over at Hopkins Academy, Tuesday, June 18th. And then on the June 14th, June 21st, June 28th, and July 5th, there's the Hadley Beer Insider Garden over at the um, West Street Common. From 3.30 to 9. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Bay Road Bridge? Bay Road Bridge is still slated for re complete replacement over a two-year period starting spring 2021. You don't happen that to, hasn't changed. I know. You didn't happen to buzz by that uh, governor's rep, did you? Uh, yes, we did. So uh, they could do it any quicker than their proposed time. Well, well, we don't want all these projects going at the same time, John. I know. I know. We don't want Route 9 and Bay Road being uh, tied up, so had, one at a time. We had John Seibeck working on trying to get that Bay Road bridge in earlier and quicker because they did the same typical Bridge Inhale. replacement, no, right in South Hadley on Route 47. Mm. And they did it at half the time. And John, our rep at the time, maybe we need to talk to Dan Carey about it. Then. I know, but it, I, I really don't want to see it's a hard. two projects going at the same time for rerouting traffic. Yeah, yeah that's, we, that's something we need to it's bring It's been up expressed. The, uh, yeah. Something we need to bring up at the stakeholders meeting, and we expressed it at the uh, public hearing for the uh, Bay Road Bridge replacement, is that mm -hmm. you, know, you can't have both projects going yeah. on at the same time. Well, Our no problem, way. too, right now is we have a joint transportation committee that I haven't had time to go to. I would like somebody from the DPW maybe to take over that role on the JTC. Mm -hmm. um, but I know we're limited on staff with that right now, but that would really help because that is an area where those kind of decisions yeah. are made. Um, but, but it's tough to do a lot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But yeah, how about, so I you think know, that's everything. Announcements? Do you I mean, want to make an announcement well, about I just that? Wanna, or? I just need a motion uh, to support the effort of uh, the town asking for a flyover from <laughs> Uh, the Air Force and next year's Memorial Day Parade. It's a long, 
process, six to eight months. So I just want to make sure that I'm doing it on behalf of the town rather than as an individual. So I just need a motion. I, I, think, we motion. Have, I think we did it at one time too. I made the motion. Can yeah. you? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I think we had done it. At one we did, time. but then they stopped. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. That would be nice, David. Thank you for yeah, doing that. Yeah. Thank you for taking that up. I think that would be great for getting more people fully involved with the parade and coming out to it. So I think it's great. We'll have plenty of parking by then. <laughs> Hopefully. You're Hopefully. Right. Any other announcements? Yeah, I have uh, two. First, uh, before I do Dorothy, I, I want to thank uh, everybody that did participate in the Memorial Day Parade this year. Um, it took a lot of coordination because of the uh, not having enough parking and doing it, but I think that uh, Chief Mason and Lieutenant Cook did a great job in uh, coordinating that with Gene Baxter and, and having it go down <coughs> Route 9 and East Street, uh, and yeah. uh, you know I think it turned out very well. So thank you to all of them, um, all the participants, people that um, lined the streets and you know came out for the parade. It was a really great day, and um, yeah, the party will pretty well there on the West Street Common, and a lot of things uh, happened. Uh, a thank you to Weinzick Nursery for uh, participating and giving us some flowers for the front of the uh, town hall and out on the water fountain. We appreciate your donations as always. Um, so again, thank you to everybody that did, uh, and then to our Legion members. I was going to say, yeah, the Legion, the I mean, they really put on a great event. And we so. are honored for the day there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to have uh, have them do that, they're lowering in numbers. So if anybody's out there that uh, are service people, mm -hmm. um, please come out and support your Legion and uh, sign up and maybe keep that place going for a while. Um, that's all I have on, on the Legion and the yeah. parade, but yeah. thank you. We'll see no, you all No, thank you for saying year. that. Yeah, I think you uh, for I forgot that that, it seems like so, so long, long ago. ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and they did, the Legion did give, uh, everybody goes back there for refreshments afterwards too, which everybody enjoys doing. So yeah. uh, thank you for, to the Legion for doing that also. We also have um, Dorothy Federa, um, her memorial service. Uh, Dorothy was part of our uh, library. Uh, no, she worked from the treasurer's office. Treasurer's office here in town hall. Okay, and her celebration and Thanksgiving of life will be uh, April fifth. No, no, that's when she that's when she died. April fifteenth, nineteen forty six to May eighth, two thousand nineteen is when she passed. The and service was last Monday, and the service was last Monday on the tenth. So we offer our condolences to Dorothy's uh, family and friends here in Hadley and thank her for her work that she did for us here at Town Hall. That's all I have right now. Okay, thank you. I don't have any announcements. Any of you have any announcements? Go on. All right. Motion, uh, to, motion adjourn. to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you for coming out.